Okay, here we go. Caleb. There are still some more seats up front, some open tables. Welcome, everyone. I'm uh, Caleb Hemphill, Chair of the Town Council. Thank you for coming out tonight. Can um, everybody hear him? Okay, so... All right, we will try and turn it up. Please listen. How sounds better? Again, welcome, everyone. There are still some seats down here, please. Thank you for coming. Um, Council and LPAC, the Long Range Planning Advisory Committee, are glad that you all came this evening. Uh, we are quite aware that there is some serious concern about uh, the result of the 2016 zoning amendments, RA's new housing starts, duplexes, and other aspects of growth and development across Falmouth. The 2013 comp plan is aging and may not be working for many residents, and the council is prepared to revise it and update it with, representative, with representation of the residents like you. We are interested in voices from throughout town and are very interested in all participants in this process. We are your neighbors and we apologize, or at least I apologize sincerely for some of these unintended consequences. We want to, he we want to hear a, a, a lot of all of the suggestions every person has here tonight and want you to be involved in the process going forth going forward in an effort for all to be comfortable, happy, and safe as resi Falmouth residents. Some of the 2016 zoning changes that resulted from the comp plan needs, needs to be changed, and we intend to make some changes. That is why we are here tonight, to hear your thoughts and suggestions. We are hoping you can make it clear statements, and counselors will reiterate this message whenever we can in the process going forward. Please contribute. Be patient, listen, and be part of this process. The overall purpose of the forum tonight is to help us work together and find solutions together, enable everyone here to give voice to their ideas and concerns in a transparent and equal way, create a shared understanding of how land use policy is developed, and provide an opportunity to move, for, move towards greater trust, respect, and collaboration. I just want to mention a few things. This meeting is being video recorded for la later uh, viewing on the town website. I don't think we will have a full stream of this discussions, but we will have a, a, a clear recording of this this evening. And we will compile and share all of the comments that you uh, provide on these clip, uh, these clipboards here this evening. And we will be using that information, publish it, and make it available to uh, others who want to see it. So with that introduction, thank you. I will hand it over to our facilitator, Susan. Great. So as we start, let's find out who's here and... Um, give everybody a name. So what I'd like you to do is in your small circle, just within your group, if you could let each, everybody know the, your name, where you live, how long you've lived in Falmouth, just like uh, I'm Susan Gallant, I live in the Town Landing neighborhood, and I've lived in Falmouth for about eight years. So if you would just um, take a couple of minutes and introduce yourselves to each other that you're sitting across from.
Yep. So introduce each other. You have a few new members to your group here. There's a there's a whole um, there's a whole group of chairs down here if you need chairs. Anybody need more time? Anybody need more time? <laughs> okay, if you could put a comma in your conversation. So a comma. Comma means we're not done, pause, and then we'll start up again. So comma. Yep. So the next thing is uh, the council is going to introduce themselves, um, their name, where they live, how long they've lived in Falmouth. So they're going to just pass the microphone around. And then we're going to have the staff introduce themselves so you know who is who and who does what. Okay. Thank you, Susan. Uh, again, I'm Caleb Hemphill. Um, I live in Dunapon Lane, down at the end of Woodville, and I've, this is my 20th year in Falmouth. Okay, next. I'm Andrea. <laughs> I'm Andrea Ferranti. I was born and raised here. I live on Greetaway. I'm not going to tell you my age. <laughs> no asking ages. Welcome, everybody. Uh, my name's Ted Ashman. I live uh, on the Falmouth Road, right near the town hall. And um, I've lived in Falmouth pretty much my whole life, and I'm not counting. Next. My name's Claudia King. I live on Woodville Road, and I've been in Falmouth for 20 years. Great. Thanks. Hi, I'm Hope Cahan, and I'm in the Stapleford neighborhood, and I've been here for almost two years. I'm Sam Rudman. I'm on LPAC Plus. I live on Ramsdale Road, and I've been here 32 years. I am Dimitri Balazos. I'm an expat from Connecticut, and I've lived here for 20 years. I live down in Forsyth Common. Hey, I'm Rich Jordan. Uh, I am on the planning board, and I'm the liaison to LPAC, and I've been here since my daughter was a baby, and I'll tell you, she's 10. So. Okay. And Becca, did you go? Okay. Yep. So now uh, there's some LPAC. All, all the LPAC introduce themselves? One more? Yeah. Okay. All right. Uh, I'm Becca Casey. I have been 15 years in Falmouth, and I live uh, off of Middle Road. And you'll hear more from me in a few minutes. Okay. All right. Did we get all the LPAC and the town council? Okay. So now um, the staff. Oh, who's back there? Oh. I... I I, I couldn't hear you. Okay, all right, great. So staff, um, let me just start over here and pass the mic. Folks, we do have seats down front here. There's two circles of chairs. There's plenty of seats. Go ahead. So I'm Nathan Poor. I'm the town manager, and I've worked here for almost 13 years. All right. Okay. Um, I'm Melissa Tryon. I'm the executive assistant, and I've worked for the town for 11 years. Okay. I'm Ethan Kroos. I'm the community development director, and I've been here about 14 years. Okay. I'm Kimberly Darling. I'm the sustainability coordinator. This is my sixth year, I believe, with the town. Okay. I'm John Kilbride. I'm the police chief, and I've been serving for 25 years. And back there, you have a uniform on, so I'm pretty sure you work here. What was her name? Kathy O'Schlego, how long? Three years. Great. Who else? Did we miss anybody? Yep, back there, Teo, nice and loud. Yep, 
Teo, Long Range Planning, 11 years, and thank you for coming. Anybody else? Okay, great. So here's the flow for the evening. Uh, welcomes, introductions, and we're in the overview right now. Um, and then LPAC is going to do a short presentation, which um, after they've done their presentation, then the task will be in small groups, and we have uh, clear instruction about what we'd like you to do and some questions to answer in response to that presentation, as well as some open-ended questions. Um, then each small group will do a report out, from a two-minute report out from what you talked about. Um, then we'll take a break for 10 minutes, and then we'll change the configuration and we'll have a dialogue um, in a circle with each other so that we can actually talk back and forth with each other. And we have a hard stop at 10.30. So wherever we are, we won't be going any later than 10.30. Oh, wine. Jeez, I thought you'd be excited about that. <laughs> Look how many people are in the room. Um, yeah. And part of why we're in this configuration today is because we just didn't know how else to give every person who was motivated enough to come out tonight um, equal time and an equal opportunity to contribute. So we're experimenting it, and I just want to um, thank you for being willing to just let's try it, engage with each other, and see what happens. Um, Can I have a microphone no, no, I'm talking. Thank you. Uh, Mike, 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 Michael, Michael. This is not a public forum. Okay. Could you please have a seat? Yes, I will. Thank, Thank you. you. Have a great night. Oh. Um, so we're, we're, uh, and those of you who'd like to sit, there's more chairs down here. Honestly, this isn't church and I'm not going to bite you. Um, we're going to get, we're going to, any questions right now? Okay, we're going to move into the LPAC presentation, um, which Becca Casey is going to share. And you have handouts, so as you're listening, you've got a copy of um, everything that's on the slide, and then there also is in your packet a poll with some data to be able to give some concrete feedback which Becca will talk more about. What? The clicker? Yep. Okay. So, yes, as I introduce myself, I am currently the vice chair of um, LPAC, and our chair uh, had a baby last week, so um, you have the pleasure of my company uh, instead of hers. Um, so, it's a closer, okay. Um, so I am going to, in the interest of getting more quickly to hearing from everybody uh, in the audience, going to flip through things very quickly. So just know that everything, you've got the slides here, it's also all available on the website as our data, charts, spreadsheets, all of the information, meeting minutes, notes, and things behind all of the things that I'm going to go over so quickly. So you can always go to the town website um, or email Teo uh, to, to access some of that information if you're having a hard time finding it. So uh, just a heads up on that. Um, quickly, the questions that we'll be asking um, for some feedback on at the end. So just to keep in mind, anything that, that you have questions or need clarification on, as well as you know, um, what, what did you like, what sounded reasonable, what didn't, um, and then and any other things that come up, uh, just to kind of tee up for that. The, uh, and then I'm so heading into just a little bit of background quickly um, as to how we got where we are now. The um, comprehensive plan um, was done 2013. It started, the work on that was about two and a half years on behalf of LPAC and public um, input. And so that effort is a 10-year outlook and um, so you'll see that we're coming up again on a window of is it time to make adjustments and what might that update look like. 
So these are just some of the high points related to residential growth and zoning that are in that report. If you ever have time, it's a much larger document, uh, and there are numerous other factors um, relating to all sorts of things across town. One of the items that um, was developed in that plan was this growth in rural map. Um, the idea being that one of the big concerns was maintaining the rural character of Falmouth. Um, and so part of doing that was, is identifying where you, where you can allow for some growth and where you want to restrict growth some more. So this map just gives you a sense of the, the red areas or the more dense, the purple where, where uh, you have more infrastructure um, and transportation and things like that readily available so they have lower impact on the town. Um, so just to give you a sense of what, what that describes. Hmm? And the green is the rural area, the designated rural area. And I'll talk more about that later, but so that gives you a sense of what, what I'll be referring to. Um, just a note on sort of the process that happens, um, LPAC, as mentioned, we, you know, we're a committee of volunteers that work with the town. We are generally, we get our assignments from the town council um, and we'll do analysis and meetings and gather information and make recommendations. Um, and so that sort of developing the policy, then the town council will implement policy. And we are now in that period in this process where we evaluate um, how that policy is working or not working. And so this is really part of the iterative process um, that we're in now. And so looking for that feedback now in this evaluation will help develop what the adjustments or changes to that policy are. Um, much of what we focused on, as been mentioned, is, is referred to often as the 2016 zoning amendments, right? So uh, just a little background on how those came about. Um, there were some um, directives around managing the growth that, um, that was coming into town and diverting some of it away from the rural areas and towards infrastructure and those sorts of things. Um, and so you can see the 2014-2015 work was done on that, then the um, recommendations made, and then those were adopted by the council. And so in that cycle, here we are now having implemented those to evaluate what's working, what's not working, um, and understanding that there were some unintended consequences and, um, and what's the next step. Um, so some of what we've already heard, um, many of you may have been at the public forum that was held in November over at the Lunt Schools. <clears throat> so um, just a, a quick bullet points on those and, and on sort of ongoing conversations. I will make um, a quick note on schools, taxes, and I would add traffic to that list as well, that um, just to say those have not been specifically a part of this LPAC exercise because they involve so many other factors in addition to uh, zoning, right, that, that we're focusing on the zoning piece that does have implications, but there, uh, it's only one of so many that um, we didn't feel that that was something that we could assess specifically with the zoning uh, considerations. So, in 2018, it has to be a part. Oh, it is a part, but it has many other factors. We'll get to it. Thank you. So in 2018, following um, some development changes uh, after the, the 2016 amendments, the council requested uh, LPAC's next assignment to um, look into effects specifically of the impacts of the 2016 zoning, um, what some of the particular concerns uh, that we were hearing from were down to, uh, you know, analyzing specific lots, also looking at what larger growth patterns were, um, so, um, and helping to assist uh, in a greater understanding of what the standards were, what the goals were, and then what, 
what the consequences were so that we could make informed decisions on how to make the adjustments going forward. Uh, so fall 2018, following that forum that we had, um, as I said, with many of you probably there, the um, assignment was sort of amended to put in specific urgency on the RA district. And so um, as what I'll walk through next are kind of how we started to look at all of that growth and then diving down specifically into the RA district to get to what we're um, specifically asking for feedback on uh, tonight in addition to general comments. So <clears throat> just some basic looks at growth patterns. And I just I want to point out a few things on here. I probably have a laser pointer here, but I'm afraid to hit the wrong button. So if you <laughs> um, looking at this 12-year uh, chart here, if you see it sort of starts right around the recession, right? 2008, so you can see that that previous pattern, um, the blue line is the growth cap units, right? So the, the number of units that are not also, that are not exempt, and I'll talk about those in a moment. Um, so that pattern was pretty steady in that area. And then you see, um, you get to 2011, 2012, that very flat spot there where the line, the yellow and blue kind of sit on each other. Um, there were no exempt units. Those were the years we were working on the comprehensive plan um, as a committee. And so just, I just point that out so that you can be mindful that the public feedback on growth at that time may have been a very different mindset when you think about what people were experiencing in that period. So that's not, it's just to point out that you know, we, we might be in a different place um, just historically as well. So uh, the spike, the big spike that you see um, you'll notice the growth cap units are not um, drastically higher, but the exempt units pushes that up. I'll talk about exempt units in uh, just a moment, but that spike there is particularly aligned with Ocean View um, when they purchased the old school properties and expanded significantly on their footprint. And so that large spike on the black line is um, Ocean View specifically. And then I, um, yeah, I'll, you can see the spike there. I'll speak to that in just a minute also. So to dive in a little bit more, um, the last three years, looking at what was 2016, 2017, 2018, so since the, the, revi the revisions to the zoning, one of those things that was done to help um, keep growth or push growth from the rural areas and into the growth areas where it could be more um, easily managed as far as from an infrastructure and taxpayer base was to create this rural growth cap. And so those, the rural growth cap is a subset of the town-wide growth cap. Those are not additional units. That's um, a cap that's hit in the rural area before then no more development can happen unless it happens in the designated growth areas. So that was one of the, the moves that happened there. And then the other, you see the little bullet there and, and I think of that when I see the little, what appears like a spike at the end of the chart, uh, the blue chart there, is that one of the other changes was um, two family units had essentially not been allowed um, in uh, some areas of town at, at all. Um, and so keeping in mind that you know, 12, 24 two family units is 12 lots, right? That you, whether or not you, are okay with duplexes or not for, for other reasons, just as far as the count, keeping in mind that that's 12 lots rather than uh, 24 lots. So um, the exempt, as I mentioned, the, the big spike in exempt was uh, Ocean View, pointing out what the, the intention of having an exempt category is that, in fact, um, senior housing particularly is going to uh, contribute to the tax base without putting kids in the schools and with a much lesser impact on traffic because you're not adding commuter traffic necessarily and, you know, and fewer vehicles. So that is um, a town policy for those reasons. And that is not something that we have visited. But if it's something um, you know, that people feel 
should be looked at or analyzed, then absolutely put that in comments as well. Um, so um, conclusions on growth. So as you can see, just um, looking that um, it's been relatively consistent with the two, with the anomalies being the um, exempt units, which sometimes spike. Um, and again, that's, you know, it's a category for a reason. It's, it was an intentional policy. And the other anomaly that's new to the development patterns are the two-family units. And so, um, again, we, the, that's not including necessarily the um, accessory dwellings, which is another category um, that has been very popular. It's actually the only growth cap that we have hit. But those are those mother-in-law units. They're very limited in size and, um, and have to stay within the character and match the buildings and the sites that they're on. So to jump to um, how we then do we dove down into specific to RA, um, this is a picture of in this time period, the total number of permitted units, the sliver, the sliver of those that would not maybe have otherwise been able to be built prior to the zoning amendments uh, are those 32, and then splitting that out by, um, by, by district, by zoning district, so that we then looked focused on the RA and those units in the RA um, as that was sort of the urgent ask of the council based on, on public feedback. So <clears throat> we did quite a bit, you know, quite a bit of um, discussion and analysis and looking at some of these and, um, and a lot of, there was a lot of talk about character. I need, I'm almost there. A lot of talk about character, and so getting to what does that mean, and so, sorry, what, what does character mean, and um, how can we specifically get enough information to translate that into um, zoning language, right? So, we, for, we uh, considered what if we just turn back the clock and, and go to pre-16, 2016, um, the... Oh, I thought that had more bullet points on it. But um, so this idea that there were reasons that the town and it was you know the demand for allowing your family to build onto your lot with you or um, the allowing for in-law apartments, um, this option without looking at affordable housing would allowing you know making it more feasible for duplex outlet um, duplex um, development to allow people that that work in Falmouth to remain here and afford to live here. And so there were a number of reasons that those were looked at and there were goals there. And it's clear, I think, that they overshot and there have been unintended consequences, but we weren't sure that throwing out all of the reasons for, for looking into it in the first place was, was the right way to go. And so that, those, that, that didn't make a lot of sense right away. The other option we considered, and I put this... This is one of very many maps that we, um, that we looked at, but I show this one to you because it's the RA district, and if you look at each of those little color blocks, is down to by neighborhood, um, and we looked at them in much more aggregate, and we looked, analyzed them by lot size and by frontage, and given the urgency with which people want to see something change, this did not seem like we could come to a good, well thought out um, rezoning of this in a really timely way. And so, um, as you see with the pros and cons, just the complexity of that meant that this was not something we were going to do in this time frame. So, what we have on the table at, um, for consideration this evening, and there are handouts at the front table if you didn't get one, is to um, make some changes to the single RA zone. So um, the not only um, will it, as it says here, sharply reduce the number of building permits issued, I will quickly note that on the website you will find a couple of the test um, analyses that we did, one of which is sort of, if my lot, if my lot were this big, I could expect to build X number of units, right? And so by lot size and the pre-2016 what you could build under the 2016 amendments and what you could build now in, um, with this 
proposed uh, solution, right? So you can see, you know, the drastic sort of spikes with the 2016 that somebody could all of a sudden build two, three, four units where they maybe could only build one or two before, and then it drops down to, you know, closer to but maybe not, you know, the one, but it's two or something. So the, you can look at those and get, get a gauge um, for how those change. And the other test was those units that could not have been built in the RA district, testing those each against, could, could each of those specific proposals that we had heard, um, not all of them had specific complaints, but ones that were in question and that people may not have been comfortable with. So we looked at all of those and tested them out and some of them fit some of the new criteria, some fit others, none of them would have passed without a variance under the new criteria, even though it's not a total rollback. So we felt that that was a, a really good step to um, alleviate, make an immediate change, right, to alleviate uh, some of the pressures that people are, are feeling right now in the short term. Uh, so you have these handouts. I won't go through all of the numbers, but you can start to compare the numbers, as I mentioned before, in the three columns, pre, the current, and then um, the adjustments that are being proposed. Just a couple of notes on abbreviations, SF, TF, and MF are for the single family, two family, multifamily. <clears throat> then um, of particular interest was, you know, we heard a lot of the character issue in, in um, especially in the RA, had to do with that houses started to look too cramped, too close together, um, not spaced out in a way that felt like part of the neighborhood, and so we really did focus on the lot width um, frontage as well as the setbacks to really look at what's the right scale um, for spacing those apart. That said, understanding the RA has a tremendous variety of density in it, right? Some houses are very close together, others are not, and so what's that uh, solution? The last item there, the net residential area, um, per dwelling unit, just so people know what that is. That is, you know, um, the area remaining buildable after you take away any um, environmental setbacks, any easements, all of those things, so that, uh, you know, you could have acres of land and still only have 10,000 feet that's left buildable if you have a big, uh, you know, lee or your water, water frontage and those sorts of things, so. The, oh, huh. Slide. See, there you go. So that's a, the test. Um, and so for LPAC to hear the feedback tonight is going to be very useful because our next meeting we need to uh, land on what our recommendation is so we can present it to the council on April 8th. And then um, extremely important for the council to hear so they can decide what to do with that recommendation because they can, uh, they can take the recommendation, they can change it, they can reject it, they can accept it. So, um, so they're going to be really listening for your feedback. And with that, I thank you for listening and giving me the time. And I also thank you for um, remembering that we're all Falmouth residents and we're all here because we care. And we also have, we bring to this different experiences and we bring different experience within Falmouth. And so I appreciate all the variety of voices that we'll hear. Great, thank you, Becca. So now you have um, you have a handout. You have the staff is handing out another handout about small group work. And while they're doing that, I want to point you to this sheet of paper that looks like this. It's a poll. Everybody got that? Looks like this. This is. Um, this is what LPAC is going to, one of the many things LPAC is going to find very helpful. So what you've got here is um, the numbers, the minimum lot size, you know, minimum lot width, et cetera, all of that from um, 2016 and then the zoning change. And then in green, it's the column in green is what's in the recommendation right now. And so what they would like is... Um, before you leave tonight, you don't have to do it this minute, but there's a box someplace. Where is that? There's a box. 
on your way out. There's a box where you can put these in. And we'd, we'd like everybody, we'd just take a poll if on each one, um, yes, no, unsure, and if you have a no, what would you recommend? So that green column, are you all with me? Anybody have a, you with me on what the, you're being asked to do on this sheet of paper? Yep, and then, oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, okay. So you don't have to do this right now, but I want you to have this in front of you as we move into the conversation we're going to have next. So the staff is handing around a sheet that looks like this to each of the groups. It says small group work. So if you're in a tiny group like two people, you might want to turn around and join the group behind you so that you're actually with the group. And, and here's the idea. Because the purpose of this is that every person has an equal opportunity to contribute. So we really want to get everybody's voice, your opinion, on a piece of paper. Everything will be collated and collected. And while you're working in these groups, have they got their handouts yet? OK, small group work. So the first thing is the ground rules while you're, just while you're working in this particular configuration, all ideas are valid. So this is not about coming to agreement, and it's not about if somebody in your group says something you don't like, it's still valid, and it gets on the flip chart, okay? All ideas are valid. All output is written on the flip chart, and there should be a marker at each, each um, it's probably on the floor in front of you. If you don't have one, uh, raise your hand, and the staff will bring you one. Here's, the other, here's another important piece. Um, differences are acknowledged, but not worked. What that means is, when you're working in your group and somebody says, oh, I think it should be 100, or I didn't like that it was 150, well, why'd you say that? We're not going to fix it. What we want to know is acknowledge that some people on the flip chart said it should be this, somebody else should, said it should be that, okay? Um, we're also really inviting you to actively listen to each other which means if somebody says something you either have a reaction to or you're not sure about, be curious. Ask them to say, what makes you say that? Listen to them. And it gets on the flip chart. And listen respective, respectfully. OK? The other piece is be crisp and say what's core. You don't want to be here till 4 AM, I know. And we want to get as many voices in as we can. So we're, you're going to have an hour for this task. So um, let's not get into storytelling and in the past and all of that. Let's see if we can really stay focused and give them some really good feedback. The next thing is observe time frames. Okay, so this is all on the front page of this worksheet. Now, in order to get all that work done, um, there's some self-management. I need three hands here. Yeah, I'll be. Uh, thank you. I appreciate that. Uh, um, now I'm nervous that I'm going to fall. I wasn't nervous until it was pointed out. OK, so here's three, three le two leadership roles. In your circle, one of you will volunteer, volunteer to be the facilitator. So what the facilitator is doing, and this is on your sheet. You can follow right along. They ensure task clarity. Everybody clear about what we're doing. They ensure each person who wants to speak has an opportunity to contribute. Keeps uh, the group focused. So if the group starts going off task, invites the group, come on, let's get back to what's the question, let's get it on the sheet of paper, and supports everybody to follow the ground rules. So if you volunteer to be the facilitator in your group, that's your job. If you volunteer to be the recorder reporter, your job is to first write legibly so that people can type it up. Um, on the flip charts, and try to use the speaker's own words. Try not to make it your words. Try to use just what they said. If they say something lengthily, uh, just ask who's ever saying it. Could they, you know, how, how would they say it in a shorter way? Or if you get it on the flip chart and it doesn't look like what you said, ask the recorder to rephrase it. So make sure you feel okay about what gets on the flip chart. <clears throat> 
that it's accurate. They'll label the flip charts with a question one and then a number um, so that all of the flip charts can stay in order. After, after we, you all work for an hour, we'll do a debrief. After the debrief, the recorder reporters will take each flip chart and we'll stack them up on the table back there. So that, and in order, question one, two, three, and four. Um, and that's it. So recorder reporter will be. Um, so before I go to the next instruction about the task, turn to the people in your group and decide who's going to be the facilitator and who's going to be the recorder reporter. Um, your, w w the question is where will the flip charts be stored? We're going to type them all up. They're going to be in stacks, and then they'll be typed up and put on the website, all of the data. I, I don't know. Be stored. Let me, I'll have to ask that because I really don't know. I'll have to ask. Okay. Okay, so let me... Yep, I will. Yep. Okay, have you decided? That's a good question, though. That's a, that's a really good question I hadn't even thought about. Yep. <laughs> so, um, I'm going to keep track. All the groups um, will try. That's why we, the, with, he, uh, what's your name? Valentine. You asked about time. That's why we're trying to keep even numbers in the group so they take about the same amount of time. Okay, some will. So we'll keep an eye on it. All right, have you got your recorder report? Your, have you got your rolls? Yes? Okay, turn your paper over on the back. Okay, so you've, you've, everybody knows who the facilitator and the recorder reporter is? Whoever is facilitating now says who... You've got question one on your sheet? Yep. Question one on your sheet, the re facilitator will say who wants to go first, and then we go round robin. Go right around the circle. You have 45 minutes. If it looks like people are done sooner, I'll call time sooner. Time is in. I'll also give you a time check. As you're working, the LPAC and the council members will be resources and will be around the room if you have questions. Par pardon the interruption. There have been some questions about where the RA zone is. So the map is up here now. The RA zone is you can see the yellow all along four side dipping down uh, to the yellow down coming towards Portland as well as um, the Pleasant Hill area, that yellow. So it's the yellow um, coming up the right side of the map. Thank you. You're okay, now each, each group will have two minutes to report out to the whole community uh, whoever your recorder reporter is will stand. Tell us your name. Uh, you'll be given a mic, and you'll have two minutes uh, to say whatever it is you think it would be important for this whole community to say based on what your small group talked about. After you've given your report out, the recorder reporter, if you would bring all of your flip charts to the back table where Teo is, and whoever starts, I'm going to ask just for a volunteer to start. And you'll go first, and you're volunteering the group to your left to go next. So whoever starts, I'm going to go to their left, and we're going to snake around. Yep, you want to start back there? All righty, so we have uh, Nathan, we got a mic to her. And so if, when, when you, if you could stand, 
And tell us your name as soon as you get the mic. Uh, good evening, everyone. Um, so, and your name is? My name is Michael you? Vance. I live on uh, Blackstrap Road. I've been in town for a little over 10 years. Great, um, thanks. So, uh, unfortunately, uh, difficult to get things done in time, uh, but I'm going to try and provide a rough uh, two to three point uh, summation as you ask. So, I think there's a sense uh, from uh, that the focus on the RA uh, proposal was a bit unexpected for the group. I thought there was a sense that there would be a more comprehensive discussion of density uh, throughout the town. Uh, and so we were kind of uh, struggling to grapple with the specificity about the recommendations uh, around that. Um, similarly, the, the format of the evening was somewhat expected also. And so uh, we felt like we were spending some time figuring that out uh, and uh, figuring out how to work within the constraints there. Um, I think the group had a sense that it would be difficult to fulfill your, the, you know, the council or LPAC's expectations uh, of sort of you know, meaningful feedback uh, given the amount of time we had uh, to kind of ingest the data and, uh, and respond to it. Um, the group wanted to know that there were mixed opinions on uh, the current direction. Um, some in the group uh, favor a complete uh, repeal to the pre-2016 uh, zoning arrangements. Others felt um, that they were comfortable with this sort of more measured approach of, of iteratively uh, uh, working on that. Uh, I think there was uh, overall also a desire for more uh, detailed and structured presentations kind of explaining uh, the background for all of this. Uh, especially getting to some sort of consensus in the data as well as a sort of robust explanation of everything. There were questions about whether the growth caps were segmented by zones or not, you know, whether there was an RA growth cap that was independent of the total uh, growth cap, et cetera. So, uh, Great. Thank you. Now we're going to the left. If you could um, hand the microphone to, to over right to your, to, oh, okay, we can go to your say. left. Yep. <laughs> Yep, so hand them the microphone, whoever, whichever group you want. All right, we're going this way. So whoever's to the left there, we're going to snake back, and you'll give them the microphone after. And if you could bring your flip charts. Uh, stop. 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 Um, if you could bring your flip charts. Great. Thank you. That was great. I'm Bill McKinney. Uh, I live in the RA zone, and I've lived there for more than 50 years. Uh, so uh, our group wanted to focus on what we wanted to make for recommendations in the RA zone. Um, and first, mention that um, um, we wish that there had been more notice um, relative to these changes before they happened, and we still aren't sure what notice was provided um, to the residents. Um, so we're, our recommendation going forward when there are these types of changes in town um, as residents would like to have improved notice, um, and I'm not sure what that is, whether it's emails or letters, but some, some type of improved notice so we're aware. Do you have suggestions about what that might be? Yeah, specific? so I like the idea, and no, we didn't even talk about this, but in the world of technology, I think that there, we ought to be able to give the town our email address, and then there could be an email blast. The problem with that is that there's an individual in town who got hold of that type of information, and then he used it to his benefit to, uh, it, which created a huge issue. So I'm not sure how to address it, but that's one suggestion. So uh, relative to what we think the Comprehensive Plan Committee might want to consider is uh, look at option two. And option two is the option that um, was discussed where um, the RA zone uh, would be looked at neighborhood by neighborhood. And they did that, and they identified all the neighborhoods in the RA zone. And then each zone would be, uh, sub-zone would be looked at relative to the character. So the uh, space and bulk and character of that neighborhood would be reflected in the requirements within that subzone. And what we heard um, the, the vice chair of the committee say was they didn't have time to do that, so they did something different. And in my view, they, they have spent such amount of time and a, a terrific deliberative um, calculated effort to go through this, and they were so close. Um, if you ran out, run out of time, you can always not make the change, or you could implement a moratorium. All right, great. Um, yeah, so we, we think that there ought to be architectural standards in the zone. Um, we think that um, you ought to look at, uh, consider option three, which is basically um, 
the space in bulk within the zone again to widen up the um, setbacks. It's more similar to what they used to be. We think that um, in order to accommodate multifamily and high density, that in the RA zone that you shouldn't allow as you are apartments and multifamily throughout the zone, but it should be accommodated to meet the needs of people and di different so socioeconomic groups. So you're, and therefore, you're, about, there, you're about out of time, so is there a okay, couple more? Okay, so there ought to be higher density along Route 1 for multifamily and allow bigger buildings with apartments along Route 1. Developers ought to pay impact fees, and we all support, um, while we want single family houses in the RA zone, other than along Route 1 where you can have more, um, we should still have or should have accessory apartments for like an, uh, an older family member to live um, as long as it's subordinate to the house. And is everything you said on your flip chart? Yes. You've got it all written down so we won't lose any of that. Yeah. Great. So thank you very much. Thanks. Now, would you hand the mic to whoever's speaking in the next group? Thank you. I don't know how this ended up being me. Uh, my name is Jamie Welch. I live on Susan Lane in West Falmouth. Um, our group took a different approach and kind of stayed away from our recommendations because we got to that last and ran out of time and I think we're all tired. Um, but the consensus of the group is that the overall way that the growth zoning issue has been handled has really been minimized and it is a really big issue, um, including the format of this meeting. Um, and it's not clear whether the so-called vision of the town is representative of what the residents feel it should be. Um, we were happy to hear that the unintended consequences were recognized uh, by the town, and we do want to make sure that going forward, staff works closely with zoning regulations and so on and so forth so that no additional unintended consequences are had. Um, and... But, you know, I think the one good thing that we saw out of this is that the proposed changes are making lot sizes bigger, setbacks larger, um, not as big and, mm -hmm. you know, not mm -hmm. all the way back, rolled back to pre-2016, which some of us think would be more ideal. Um, but, you know, I guess better than going back the other way. Okay. Thank you. And I, and I want to remind everybody that you've got this poll so if the specific, if individuals in here, if you complete that before you leave, the specific numbers about lot size and all of that, give your opinion about yes, no, or what you think it should be. So we're going to the left there. Thank you. So what two or three things do you want the whole community to hear? My name is Rich Bicknell. I'm a... Uh, um, over by Highland Lake. Um, let's see, our, let's see, we kind of broke our report down by question. Um, okay. This is a huge task or problem with lots of terminology that needs to be digested and we thought it could be presented in uh, more plain English. Um, we would like to uh, say a specific thank you to the town and to LPAC um, for actively seeking public in input. Um, that's going to be a very ongoing process for you guys. And boy, is this a big notepad. <laughs> um, we, are, we were a little bit unclear on the need to increase density in the town and uh, what the specific benefits are of why um, the town wants to increase density. And then can we go back to the old standard and can we make sure to consider environmental impacts of uh, all the development in the town? Yep. Yep. Great. Thank you. Good evening. Uh, I'm Pete Dutz. I uh, live over in the Pleasant Hill area. Uh, so I'll just summarize uh, three themes that our group had here. Uh, so basically, we discussed infill lots uh, really should have public infrastructure to match development. Um, if you're putting in a bunch of houses, we want to see the sewer uh, connected to those houses. We want to see sidewalks uh, appropriate with the density of the community. Um, we've run into issues with, you know, there's more kids, more people in that neighborhood, more runners, walkers, and no sidewalk along that road. Um, Planning needs to be involved at smaller scale to prevent issues like sewer, water, sidewalks, 
Uh, people have houses being built in their yards that are, or backyards that are uh, now having drainage issues that weren't there previously. Um, and we feel that uh, planning should look at a more detailed level, detailed scale. I know that some projects that are small scale don't go through the planning office. Um, so planning needs to happen on a smaller scale level. Uh, we're also wondering why this is happening now. Um, you know, 2016 was a change, and, and right now we're in 2019. That's only a few years. Um, I f the group felt like we need to be more strategic than that as a planning. Um, you know, we're a 300-year-old town. Why aren't we planning in 10, 20, 30, 50 year increments? Um, and, and why are we straying for that and, and yeah. being reactionary instead of, yeah. so. Great, thank you very much. And I, thank you. And I appreciate you all really keeping it to about two minutes. It's really great, thank you. All right, we're going to the left. I know this, we're, we're snaking is what we're doing here. I'm John Heath. Uh, I live on Skittery Gusset uh, Drive. Um, in our group, there was uh, differences of opinion about the, uh, the recommendations. Some people thought they were too stringent, and others thought we should roll it back uh, to, to the earlier, earlier recommendations, earlier numbers. Um, <clears throat> so that led us to uh, think that perhaps we needed a, to get a better explanation of how you arrived these recommendations and maybe uh, provide, find out where we could get access to, to um, data that you used and then the reasoning that led to, to these, these numbers. Um, uh, one other uh, suggestion was that maybe we don't have really enough time uh, before the decision by the council. Mm. The so don't have enough time, so is the recommendation that they take more time? Yeah, I think, I think so. I think that um, maybe if there was an opportunity, people would like to, once they had the information that they were looking for, uh, could, could make some suggestions before, again, before the decision is actually made. Okay, great. Thanks. Is, is the people behind you gone? And who? Good job. Thank you. Hello, everyone. My name is Tommy Johnson. I'm a resident of Underwood Road for about 11 years in the RA district right off of Route 88. Uh, to answer the first question, um, questions about clarification about what we just heard, uh, there were a few people in our group that weren't aware that the zoning had actually changed. Um, so they were asking for clarification on that. Uh, they felt that the town was making decisions without hearing from its residents. And then there was a question about where did the push for zoning changes actually come from? Was it from residents or was it from developers? Question. Second question was what did you one? like? Um, like the idea that fellow citizens were willing to volunteer to shape the zoning rules. I think that was in particular the folks on the LPAC committee. I think we should give them a round of applause for the fact that they were here doing this today. <laughs> Volunteers. But second to that, the fact that the town seemed ready to listen, uh, I think everyone universally agreed with that as well. Um, and that ties right into the third point, the fact that the town and LPAC are working together to find a solution. And that's why we're all here. Um, and lastly, that, that we have this forum. I think there's probably well over 200 people here tonight uh, providing citizens the voice, their opinions, um, versus only hearing from developers. And then the last portion was uh, a communication in the form of a flyer that was actually put out by citizens um, you know, versus only coming from the town. The so what about that? I didn't quite understand your there last was, uh There was a comment about uh, there was communication that was put out by private citizens to, inf to better inform the community. Oh, okay, gotcha. That the town should have put out more information is what I don't you're know. Saying. I don't know whether it should have, oh, but okay. Great. Just a, a private fact. citizen did. Yep. Uh, last third question, what didn't you like about what you heard? The only thing that came up as a common theme was that the previous communication didn't include or didn't reach all of the stakeholders. Okay. And then lastly, what other ideas, suggestions, or requests do we have? Um, there was discussion about a new, well-thought-out, long-range plan. I think we heard from that from a couple other groups. Um, we'd like to have a study that really, um, a study the developmental impacts on things like schools, traffic, taxes, et cetera. 
Um, there was a question about how do we ensure adherence to a new or revised long-term plan? And then there was consensus about maybe slowing down development, listen to the citizens, just be thoughtful about okay. how we develop. Great. And then one last page. Um, there was a suggestion about do we need to make Falmouth more appealing? We're one of those four or five towns in the greater Portland area that is a bedroom community that's desirable. Um, do we need to make Falmouth more appealing? It, it already is appealing, so consideration for that. And then lastly, uh, consider adding you know, market rate housing. These are for our working residents, including teachers, fire, police. Um, make sure that we're considering that in any development plans. Great, thank you. Has the group to the left gone yet? Okay. Hi, uh, Scott Walker, I live on uh, Stone Ridge Road. Um, we agree with them almost, I think, a lot of what we've heard. Um, I think the general education, I think, to the town would be very helpful. And I think getting it into um, real world examples, um, instead of, you know, charts with square footages and just 5,000, you know, if you were to take like Tidewater, let's say, and okay, there's 50 homes in there now, if we pass this, we could stuff 100 homes in that area. Um, I think real world examples to go along with the charts would be very helpful. Mm -hmm. um, you know, the changing of the community and making these high density neighborhoods and whatnot, you know, it seems like the big thing that's about the conservation of land. But if you're going to allow someone to keep all those houses into a small area, you know, yes, you're not really conserving land because the next guy is going to do on the next piece of land. If you're going to allow a high density development, um, you know, I think other buildable areas in the town should have to be set aside by the developer in order, you know, to keep the community and keep it, mm -hmm. um, you know, in what we've all come to love in Falmouth. Um, and I think lastly, um, you know, um, the town requiring more impact studies by the developer as part of the application process initially right off the bat. You know, I don't know whether you set a size at, you know, 20 homes in development or whatnot, but more um, initial impact studies being done by impartial uh, companies in, as part of the application process Great. initially instead of requiring it afterwards. Yep. So, thank, you. thank you. Is there any more back there to the left? Okay, let, I guess you're back down here now. Or is there right here? Okay, two more there. Great, thank you. Yeah. My name's Kathy Nichols. I live in Stapleford, so I'm um, hopefully objective. We had a lot of different discussion and opinions from our group because we do have a few people in the RA district and I think a lot of us were sort of confused that this was just about the RA district and wondering what is the actual objective here are we trying to create more diversity in our town more economic differences um, one of the reoccurring subjects that came up was if we're creating more density in the very pleasant side of town. That area is pretty expensive for most people to try to just buy a piece of property in, and so we didn't feel that that was going a great distance toward you know, embracing different economic differences in Falmouth. We talked a lot about why can't we have a little more of an organized and well-planned out communities without being a tax burden on the town in a more rural district and um, creating more communities that we can have our in-laws move to or people who've been divorced don't have to leave Falmouth. And I think those are some pretty compelling perspectives. Uh, we also stressed that if we are gonna improve and grow density, we need to have the studies done ahead of time. Mm -hmm. And the exempt units, which I think are, uh, what, what are the exempt um, type of, could you explain that for us? What is actually exempt from being studies? It's the retirement communities so subsidized. So I'm getting a head nod yes on that. Okay, that I've, we feel that those should be included in some aspects of a study before being built. Okay, right. Um, one suggestion was to have the existing homes in the RA be grandfathered and be allowed to have a little more lenience with uh, side and front. I think that was it. All right. Setbacks. Right. Thank you. Thank you. And the, bring the microphone to, I think there's one more group next to you. Thank you. Hi, um, Michelle Sheldon um, on 88. Um, so honestly, we kind of felt that the amount of information was um, overwhelming and kind of difficult to synthesize and then um, apply to your four questions. So we kind of veered from, from that format. Um, so we've got just general thoughts that we That's wanted great. to share. Um, 
honestly, we didn't like this format. We felt that it was had more of an effect of silencing our voice um, rather than allowing us to sh discuss um, various topics. Um, one would be, um, we were wondering why was this only about RA? Many of us in the group were also concerned about the West Falmouth area. Um, we had thoughts that uh, we are turning more into a city and that if we wanted to live in a city, we would have moved or stayed, some of us in Portland. Um, when it comes to the RA, uh, we in general are in favor of much larger lot sizes, um, at least to what we were pre-2016. And we had even thought about considering looking at what other towns in the um, 88 corridor are doing, like in Yarmouth and Cumberland, where they're closer to two acre minimum lot sizes. Um, we, uh, we're also concerned about, not only for us synthesizing this information, but how are you gonna be able to process all this information and come up with a decision by Tuesday night? Um, we um, also were concerned that no schools, uh, there were no impact studies, so schools weren't considered, taxes, traffic, the environment. Um, we feel that uh, changes should not be done unless the, those impact studies are done. Um, we're also feeling the pressure um, when it comes to taxes and are concerned that it's forcing out lifelong res residents and we're wondering what's happened to our aging in place policy. We'd like to see more transparency around LPAC meetings and how these appointments are made um, and are um, suggesting that they consider televising them um, like they do with the um, council meetings. Um, back to RA, we are not for multifamily housing. We do not like the idea of two-family housing. Um, we think that the accessory dwelling should be um, con with conditional approval. Um, we, sh we think that developers should be um, charged for impact fees and that, like I was saying before, that we shouldn't be able to do um, any developing without these impact studies. Um, we're concerned about preserving the character of the town and we feel that if we actually work towards doing that, that will help preserve our property values. Um, we also talked about some of the other developments that are happening. So you only have a, a few more okay. seconds. Okay, I have three so more sentences. Um, one is the habitat development. Um, and we're concerned, you know, we don't know what that's going to contribute to our town other than increasing taxes for current residents. Um, we're also concerned, again, about conflicts of interest regarding people on the council um, and their personal business. And we, um, our last comment here has been concerned about the elementary school. It's already the largest in Maine. So, um, we're wondering why would we be um, incentivizing growth to add to that. Great, thank you. Now the mic back down, I think we're back down here. Um, Where do I go? So you're gonna have to do some walking here. Raise your hand, where am I going? <laughs> thank you. Uh, good evening, my name is George Tabarge, and I am a real-world example because if it weren't for the 2016 amendments, I wouldn't be here tonight. Those uh, made it possible for me to purchase a single-family home and put, a, put an apartment in the basement, and that's the only reason I can afford to live in Falmouth. Our group uh, took the format of what do we like, what don't we like. What we do like is the, in the L, uh, LPAC proposal, is the uh, increased setbacks, the increased lot sizes, and the increased uh, road frontage. What we don't like, uh, at least one of our members didn't, don't, does, excuse me, didn't like the constant change that's happening, and so there's no predictability in the zoning. Um, we thought that the zoning is too complex, that uh, the front setback is too small, and that needs to be adjusted. Uh, not just side setbacks, that the restrictions on existing home expansions should be looked at. Uh, we don't like the lack of design controls on high density uh, residential development, and if you compare that with the design controls on the commercial that Falmouth has adopted, that should be looked at. And finally, for recommendations, we recommend a 100 foot setback, or excuse me, 100 foot road frontage instead of 110 feet. Uh, increasing the front setbacks to 25 feet unless there is special design review. Uh, apply residential design guidelines, controls like we have for high density 
uh, for commercial, and then finally treat existing uh, home expansions different than uh, right. new, new subdivisions. Great. Thank you. So this group have a two-minute report out? Thank you. I'll be even faster because it's... And your uh, name? My name is Tom. I live in Pleasant Hill. And uh, we had a variety of uh, opinions in our group, many of which have already been voiced. Uh, we have a couple of people who have small construction projects on their property that they've been planning, uh, maybe adding a, turning their house into a duplex or adding one other house, and that this, they're not developers, and that this plan will uh, make it so it's impossible for them to do that. We also had a group that had great concerns about overcrowding in the schools um, and, and sort of the global things, traffic, pollution, et cetera, as a result of growth and uh, development. And there are a lot of ideas like development fees, uh, impact fees, and uh, similar things in order to try to balance that, plan ahead for the impact on the schools when you have new development. In other words, the city council, it's not really a land use issue, but if there's going to be growth, the town council has to think ahead on how it's going to increase costs, increase strain on the schools. I think that there was a lot of folks that were open and understanding of the idea that we need more uh, affordable housing, uh, for again, this was raised before and how a struggle it is to find a balance between including that and addressing some of these larger impact and, and how hard that is to do. Great. Thanks, Tom. Let's go over this way. Thanks. So, uh, Valentine minutes. Sheldon, Route 88. Um, our group, let's see, we talked sort of very high level, quite honestly, about stuff. We did not get into the details because it was generally felt that it was a little too much to handle for the, in this kind of format. Um, there was a bit of a consensus that this format was unexpected and um, was, was uh, not something that was necessarily helpful. Mm -hmm. um, no, we did not go in order. Uh, we bounced around. It was, it was a very nice dialogue. Um, we felt that there was an, a need to prolong the decision process. We felt like this was a very rushed process. Uh, we wanted more opportunity for dialogue with residents. We didn't think there was enough input, as this is really it here tonight, um, for a huge change that will affect everybody, every taxpayer. Um, back to question four. Uh, there was a, a desire for a temporary moratorium on building permits in RA um, to avoid a gold rush mentality, which many of us who, we all actually lived in RA, and there are developers who are knocking on neighbors' doors telling them, hey, we can uh, cut your lot into five. What do you think? Um, we did get to question one, um, is this a done deal? There was a concern that this was this gathering tonight was simply lip service to residents. Uh, can we affect some change? Big question. Uh, do residents actually have input? Again, lip service or, you know, does this matter? Are we wasting our time? Uh, define long-range planning. That was that was a big one. Are we talking here five years, ten years? I think this goes back to the the uh, unpredictability factor that's, that's been going on? Or should we be a town that actually is planning for 100 years? We're 300 years old. Um, what's, what, what is that line? Uh, let's see here. Questions one and three. Uh, in reference to slide number 13, why aren't the impacts of schools, taxes, traffic included in, in the research and planning of the LPAC? or environment and infrastructure. Again, it just comes back to, are we gonna make a giant change again with absolutely no impact studies? D didn't make sense to this group. Uh, again, possibly freeze of permits granted in RA. Page one, bullet number two. Uh, question four, why, this goes back to the communication. We, we are repeating many themes. So, so um, yeah, why, why no mailer? Why no town-wide announcement uh, of this forum or changes in zoning? 
Uh, so there were some suggestions on how to handle that. Um, but communication was a huge one. And then what, what is the optimal outcome? Residents, what do residents really want? And I think that, that was a big thing we talked about. And how do we get there? Um, did you have suggestions? Because there's a lot of questions. Did you have a suggestion on that one about how to get there? Uh, get, getting representatives from neighborhoods. Okay, so. Yeah. That, and, that, and, that, taking, and again, taking a long time. Yep. Like we don't understand the rush. Yep. So that specific suggestion is helpful. Is that written down on your sheet? Uh, no, we can no write let's it down. get it written down, make sure yeah, we don't okay. lose it. Yep. Uh, question four, I think this is very important for everybody here, which is uh, the, there's a lack of trust in the town of citizens. We feel that, uh, that the 2016 rezoning um, has created a sense of distrust of, of our government. Okay. Um, we have just a yeah. couple more yeah, seconds. Yeah, yeah. You feel uh, like you got the essence of it? I think there's something else here. Jesus, how many temperatures are? We didn't think that the data was adequate. And focus on lot size does not take into account population size. So I will finish with. We really think, our group, I think, concluded with the idea that this isn't really about lot size so much as it is about the population that the lot size allows for. And there was a number of, um, in the comp plan, in a draft document somewhere, I did find that there had been a um, research into how many homes could have been built pre the rezoning and then post. And... The numbers are huge, and if you start looking into what that means population-wise, yep. turn into a city, good. like good. the largest one in, in, in Maine. And that's written down. Great. Yep. Thank you, so. Valentine. And we can give you a mic to this group. Thanks. Yep. Thank you. Hi. I'm Steve Dyer, uh, Mountain Road. Uh, um, our group definitely... Can you hear him back there? Yep. Okay, great. Do I need to face them? No, it's just getting the mic closer to your mouth. Um, there you go. We echoed a lot of what other people have said. Um, it seems like the whole process, both now and even back in the 2016 time period, was, is very abrupt, and there isn't math and data behind uh, the decisions. It seems almost like it's just arbitrary numbers being selected, and it's not really being evaluated as to its impact on population and things like that. Um, rather than kind of go through questions one, two, three, and f uh, we'll, I'll go right to four. A couple things that we uh, really brought up as questions were, uh, again, not hitting the other zones of the town. Uh, my group had folks from three different zones, um, two folks from RA, but the other four people were from other zones, and it just seems... Uh, if there's kids that are moving into the VMU zone, they go to the Felmet school system. So it's kind of hard to just look at that in a, you know, with your blinders on. Um, the thought that somebody mentioned about uh, really doing cost-benefit analysis for any substantial developments um, and looking at schools, police, the environment, fire, sewer, um, that if they meet these zoning, that all of a sudden they get this, you know, green light to to build and not require the developers to do that when they have so much impact on a community. Uh, we we felt that that was something that should be necessary. Um, impact fees or something like that to maybe mitigate those. Um, it also, one of the other things that we talked about was just more comprehensively looking at neighborhoods and where there's multiple developments going in um, side by side, but each of them kind of gets away with it because they're not looked at from a comprehensive standpoint. Um, we didn't really like uh, how it was responded in terms of uh, rolling back to the 2016, it almost was like, well, we're not gonna consider that. Um, and I think that that is something that across the group, they felt that that's almost like a minimum step was rolling back to pre-2016 um, and maybe even going potentially even more if the numbers supported it. Um, we also didn't like that uh, it was never looked at um, about reducing the cap, building cap permit that to me that, and 
the group when we were talking about it, that that's something that could be looked at as well, that maybe, you know, the 65 uh, is too big of a number for a community our size. And since no impact studies have ever been done on, you know, that 65, maybe it's, you know, three years into it, we realize that that's too big of a number and that number could be reduced. Uh, and that's about it. Great. Thank you. Let's go. Oh, back here. Back here. <laughs> okay, back here. All right. And then back down. Thank you. Good evening. Uh, I'm Jim Hauptman. I live on Hedgerow Drive. Um, our group, uh, we kind of were all over the map. We had a great conversation. And I think that one of the concerns we had was on the form that by somehow checking no was default that we were uh, happy with the current RA zoning. So we just wanted to make sure that no for us meant something other than that. Um, we also acknowledge that we're not experts in this area and uh, that it probably took several years for the LPAC and the town to come up with the current plan um, and that the time that's elapsed since this was revisited to today was perhaps too short to make a, um, make a recommendation of this kind. So uh, we, uh, for that reason, felt that we would perhaps uh, want to implement a moratorium on further building until we can go back and revisit the pre-July plan and uh, see what's the best path, path, best path forward. Um, we are all in favor of responsible development across the town, but we didn't feel like anyone should feel like they hit the jackpot because they found out how to subdivide a lot in the RA. Um, we also wanted the town to potentially revisit uh, the decisions that led to uh, less, diver uh, less density in rural Falmouth, and we'd like to go back and see that. And um, that was it. Great, thank, thank you. you. As this group, then we'll. Uh, my name's Amanda Henson, and I live on Meadow Creek Lane. And Can you our put your mic had, a little closer? Oh, to uh, I live on Meadow Creek Lane, and our group had um, good representation from all around town. Um, I think a lot of what we felt has already been said, but I guess um, one of the points I'd like to make that we all felt that um, LPAC and the council should. Um, go back to the pre-2016 zoning change and do the hard work to figure out what it should be and not rush because it's complicated. Um, and that in, in making decisions about growth, um, to look at the overall impact of any proposed changes on infrastructure, traffic, the schools, the environment, and um, I'll be brief because it's getting late. Great, thank you. Let's go, is there an, oh, yeah, that's all right. Doesn't matter. Thank you. My name is Robert. I live on uh, Pleasant Hill Road. And uh, we've been sitting here nodding with everything everyone has said in total agreement. Uh, so I'm not going to be redundant. Uh, the word Thank transparency, you. I think, uh, which was noted on the screen a couple of times, and I think most of us agree we did not experience that after 2016. Uh, nor did we understand the process that was used to come up with these decisions. Uh, so I think our group was pretty much all uh, inclusive with all the things that everyone else has said. Uh, reverting back to the 2016, as been mentioned uh, by everyone, I think, and uh, as a parting comment, uh, my wife said as an aside, there never seems to be any communication issues when the tax bill comes out. So, thank you. All right, next group. Again, we. I'm Richard Frost. I live lived on Johnson Road for 30 years, and um, we also wondered about fitting this into a, the general context. You know, the the overall plans reminded me a little bit about the the Shaw's area development where we needed the traffic study and the environmental study and didn't have all that. So, you know, traffic, schools, taxes, walkability, aging in place, environment, all those things need to be considered when we're doing any of this. My suspicion is that the LPAC and the town council are so immersed in this and there probably are ways that if we knew how we could 
track the information and be better versed in it, but because you're so immersed in it, maybe you're not as aware of how little communication we're getting about it. So in our group, like many others, there was a considerable surprise and confusion about the subject of tonight's meeting, the format, the fact that it was specific to RA, et cetera. As far as the um, specific issue, which option would be appealing, um, it seemed to break out, break down into lines of who has existing property that would be affected um, and maybe who would rather limit the growth. And we did have people in the group who have property in the RA zone who have already planned on uh, developing it in a certain way that the new um, proposed zoning rules would would prohibit. So that's a, a big concern. Um, and the point was also made that when you change the zoning rules, you maybe satisfy a certain group of vocal, um, for lack of a better word, complainers, um, and change that to another group which would be affected by new zoning rules. Um, and I don't see any other notes. Okay, great. Thank you. Hi, my name is Rachel Sears, and I uh, recently bought property in the RA, and um, my family has been in Falmouth for, I don't know, somewhere near 60 years now, though, so I'm excited to be moving in. Um, I think overall, our group was really pleased with what we think is a good faith effort on behalf of the committee to solicit and collect feedback from the public, but we're concerned that tonight doesn't go far enough, and I'll touch on that later within two minutes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think the, the main concerns that we had are that the proposal really doesn't address the primary and significant concerns of the group. We weren't clear on what the justification was for the 2016 rezoning, and we don't understand it now, and so there's a need for more transparency. Um, I think we would echo the, the request for impact studies to the extent that those are economically feasible. And um, we're concerned that the presentation did not address the rationale for, um, for the development changes, like I said, but also how those um, harmonize with the comprehensive plan. And to the extent that those do, that hasn't been communicated. So I think it seems like there's a lot of confusion here, and so if people are missing something, it seems to be around a lack of communication, not a lack of interest um, in participating. There was also um, surprise here about why the focus on RA. We felt like we were being asked to make very micro decisions without having a lot of macro um, information. And so on that note, we didn't really give a lot of specific recommendations because we felt like we all need to take a step back and do impact studies, um, circulate those, and then have then reconvene and have a more informed discussion when we have more robust data to work from. Yeah. Great. Thank you very, very much. Let me do you, and then we'll whip around. One of you guys will be last. Yes, okay. yeah, I know, but you have, guys haven't gone either. And then we've got two more. Hi, I, I can, oh my goodness, that's so loud. Uh, yeah. I can assure you I will probably be the least compelling speaker here. Um, What's your name? My name is Steve. That's compelling. And I live on Middle Road in Falmouth in the RA district. <laughs> Thank you very much. Um, I, I, really, um, I really appreciate and, and feel all the things that people have said. Um, we didn't get very far, I'm afraid. Um, I, I think one of the things that, uh, that we wanted to know as a group, or at least uh, hear from you, is to explain the mechanisms for public opinion and input for crafting uh, the, con the comprehensive plan and the uh, 2016 zoning rules. Um, yeah, it's just a general thing. Um, some of us like that this forum is designed uh, ostensibly to address uh, the concerns about higher density growth, 
but others in the group also felt that this was uh, very compressed and that it was uh, really just sort of an attempt to, uh, to appease or, or potentially distract from the bigger issues. Um, I've lived in uh, Falmouth for 25 years, and I, I left Portland because I wanted some elbow room. I had two little kids at the time, and I wanted to go someplace that was safe, that had good schools, um, where you could be close to the things that you wanted to be close to, but still have some space that you could really say was your own. And I think the danger of uh, too much high-density growth and allowing people to stick houses on little tiny lots is uh, we're going to totally wreck why we came here in the first place. So, Great. Thank you. Thank you. Right. Two more, right? Huh? Three more? Yeah. I got one here and then here. All right. You get to go last. Good, good. Okay. Hi. Um, my name is Sarah Boudreau, and um, I live on the Gray Road, and um, don't go there, <laughs> at least for another year. Anyway, um, the first thing I want to say is that everyone agreed that um, we were happy that there was a willingness to listen on the part of LPAC and the council and the town. Um, also, the things we felt that we started that were, we felt were important, um, that this has been said already, but that the, we thought there should be more of a discussion of issues that are of concern to us. Um, for instance, um, not just the zoning, uh, but ta taxes, school crowding, traffic, environmental issues, and also um, um, issues on infrastructure, which includes fire and safety as more residents are included. Um, the other thing I want to say is that we felt it was important that um, we don't understand that the town makes an assumption that growth is inevitable. Um, therefore, why not a moratorium? Um, and one of our group members mentioned that towns in southern New England have found success with this. Also, um, it was mentioned in our group that zoning laws were, they felt were intended to protect residents, um, but we feel they felt that the goalposts had been moved um, and possibly negatively impacting residents. And I think that's about it for us. So Great. We'll Thank you. Yeah. All right. I get to bring up the end then. Uh, I'm Bart. I live on 88. And our... Uh, we actually had a lot, uh, quite a bit of uniformity within our dis uh, group here. Uh, they wanted to bring up some clarifications. Uh, f the uh, some of the folks felt it was uh, that it, there was assumed a base knowledge and understanding of what was going on, and they wanted to know why we were focusing on RA and not the rest of the town when the growth metrics uh, that they showed up there were according to plan for RA and. Uh, they wanted to make it more clear as to what areas encompassed RA. Okay, the, uh, as far as the question, though, what, uh, what they liked is the, uh, they appreciated L LPAC uh, acknowledging the outcomes might be uh, not quite as was intended, and we're taking a step back and involving the community. They like that, they're taking it seriously, and the, uh, but they, it shows that the actual growth is matching the projected growth and that they are maximizing the input from the uh, group and the people around here and uh, hoping they're paying attention to it. What they didn't like, uh, they said, uh, when we talked about the single family versus the two and the multifamily, it almost seemed like the, the proposed changes were tilted toward away from the single family and more toward the multifamily. And if you look at the, the list of uh, what happens with the multifamily and everything, it, it seems to override the single family as it goes on. Uh, it seems that it will drive up the cost of lots for the single family homes uh, by increasing the land uh, size for single family homes and uh, proposed lot, plan makes existing lots worthless that we're, uh, so we're talking about a grandfather clause. And then the, uh, let's see, 
Okay, when it seems that single family does not seem to be the problem. And, uh, oh, that kept going. Uh, <laughs> the, uh, they're in too infatuated with density. Uh, this is in South Florida <laughs> and uh, North Portland uh, we're talking about. And uh, we, get, we got on, on to uh, ideas and everything. Uh, allow a high single family density, uh, but uh, be more cautious with the multifamily density. And, and the points were that uh, the character of Falmouth overall the, was more of an emphasis needed on single family homes and development rather away from the multifamily. And it says, uh, talk about impact studies for the school and the uh, traffic environmental services, and basically preserve the character of Falmouth, which is more or less a single family bedroom community, but it said that uh, we don't want to be like Portland with all the multifamily uh, homes stuck everywhere. So that's, mm. that's what that's Great, yeah. thank you. We, get, we got everybody? So I want to show you all of those flip charts. Uh, everything on them will get typed up, as is uh, Melissa also has been typing up this um, debrief, so that's all getting captured as well. Um, anything that anybody noticed that you just want to name in terms of patterns of what you heard? Yep. Can we get him a mic? Um, okay, here you. Yeah. Can, where is the mic? There it is. Bart's good. Okay, so one of the patterns is not understanding why impact studies have not been done and aren't being done. Okay, yep, that was clear. Yep, okay. All right. Um, what we're going to do now is, is uh, take a break. There you go. And I understand that some of you may have had enough and you want to get out of here. And um, if so, on your way out, there are flip charts that say what worked well tonight and how would you improve it. So... Um, and we'd appreciate it if you used a marker and gave us some feedback. However, in 10 minutes, we'll be coming back, and we'll have a little different configuration, and anybody who wants to talk directly to the council will have an opportunity to do that in a different format. And regardless of where we are, we have a hard stop at 10.30. So 10-minute 10 break. Uh, here's what we're doing. We're forming a circle in the center here. So you, you ladies might want to move. We're having a circle in the center with all of the counselors. Uh, you're going to pull up a chair around the circle. Yep. So hold on. Right? You wait, wait a second. I'll tell you what we're doing. So... Pull your chairs in. We're forming a circle. And we're going to circle around the circle. One. Yeah, rings around the circle. Thank you. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four. So, Ted, have a seat. Andrea. So, you can just pull your... Okay, so here's what we're doing. Okay. So, uh, I want Ted over there. Yep. So, how many chairs have we got? So here's what we're doing, if I can get the right number of chairs here. So we've got uh, one, two, six counselors. Then we've got um, six chairs for you. Wait a second, I need one, two more. One for me and an open chair. 
And I need um, another mic. Would one of you bring me another mic? Okay, so here's, here's, for those of you who are here and you would um, like to, ha to talk directly to the town council and you haven't been able to do that, this is an opportunity to do that. And what we're inviting you to do is, for those of you who, we have six chairs, so six of you can come into this circle, and we have one open chair. So while the people who are talking are in the circle, and this will be a back and forth, talk to them about what you want to talk about. We'll expect active listening, paraphrasing, asking questions, doing what you need to do. Hello there. Um, and um, I, my role will be to facilitate to make sure that we're actually hearing each other. Those of you in the circles on the outside um, are to really just listen silently. But if as the conversation's going, you feel like, oh, I want to get in on that, we have an open chair. So come in, say what you need to say, and go back out. And the six people who come in, once you've had the conversation you want to have, then I'll invite you to go out so somebody else can come in. Okay, so um, you can bring your chairs up as close as you want. Uh, all I ask is that those on the outside are really just listening silently while the conversation's going on on the inside. So please come in. Six of you. We can take six at a time and one open chair. When do we play musical chairs? So ho ho start, you start, stay start, right start, there. Start the music. No, we'll duck, duck, Aaron, you duck, stay duck, there. Please. You don't go anywhere. It was a joke. Oh. Um, so we've got two more. Two more people can come in. We have space if you want. Anybody else? Sure. Why not? Sure. Oh, that's for you though. No, you can sit there since you've got. And if you scoot over yeah, sure. there, then uh, this chair is open for if something comes up. Um, okay, so now is an opportunity to, and um, any of you who have something you'd like to talk directly to the council about, go ahead and use a microphone so we can, no, you, oh, yeah, okay, thanks. Um, so um, this is Amanda Henson, and, you know, it's really wonderful to have. Can you put your mic on? Oh, this closer. is wonderful to have the opportunity to talk to you. But this feels like deja vu from this summer. It's quarter of 10. I mean, many of you have probably worked all day. I did. Um, it just, this doesn't feel good that, you know, here I have, we have this opportunity. And a lot of people left because, and I'm sure they would love to talk to you. So, um, but I, I guess the other thing I just would like to say is that I, I think a lot of what was put in place with zoning, the comprehensive plan. It was all well-intentioned and was based on the information you had at the time. But we all know that there are shortcomings with it, and I think it's just time to revisit a lot of it and and um, make more um, make better decisions or or, or, or um, clarify things that need to be clarified. So, would so. one of you paraphrase what you heard her say before you respond? So what'd you hear? I'll, her say? I'll, I'll try. Um, so one of the things I heard you say was this format maybe not ideal, especially the schedule. Um, it's pretty late. I think folks are tired, kind of done this kind of thing before. Um, and then also that um, the comp plan maybe was well intended, but is not working the way it should be, and that there are significant issues with it as it is now and in, in the implementation stage. Just, just a quick question on that. Um, Aaron said it was a comp plan that was, well, not. Is it, is it the comp plan or the zoning that resulted there well, from? Two I different think things. Both, both things. Um, you know, I, I think the zoning came from the comprehensive plan um, and then the 2016 zoning changes. You know, the, it just, what we went through with the, the shopping center, I, mean, I think that we saw that there were a lot of things that maybe should have been more carefully spelled out. You know, I don't know what the right way the right way to go about that is, but um, you know, I think what was said about the the RA, their unintended consequences. So, um, it, yeah, it's beyond the comprehensive plan. Okay, well, I, I certainly think, and we've had some discussions. Um, we're not very far out from sort of the ten-year 
thing on the uh, comprehensive plan looking at it, and I don't think there's anything magic. Um, other than a state regulation, you have to have one every 10 years. I mean, if we start working on that very soon, um, we, could, we could be looking at that perpetually, or every five years or three years. It doesn't have to be 10 years, but I think, I think it's pretty clear that a lot of people would like to see us taking a hard look at that uh, sooner rather than later. Great. Great. All right. So, and if you feel done, you can step out and somebody else can step in. Thank you. Thank you, Amanda. And can I make a comment? Yep. Oh, this is Claudia. Um, and I think the development of a comp plan takes time. Policy doesn't come overnight. Um, and so we totally get that, you know, there is policy and then there is implementation, which is the creation of the regulations that are on the ground. And we totally get, you know, the pushback about the implementation or the regulations. And it's, um, you know, the, how can I say the first thing is to like look at that, the implementation, and see if we, can, you know, can't, I mean, you know, work on that, which is what this recommendation is about. So that changing policy is not done overnight. It's a considered lengthy process. So would one of you paraphrase what you just heard Claudia say? He's got the mic. Uh, he's got the mic. Okay. He'll get it back. He'll get I it back. I think what you were saying is, is that policy, land, land use policy, is, it takes a lot of time to actually implement and put and put together. I think that's what you were saying. Is that, right? that is what I was yeah. saying. Good, good, I got it. Okay, great, thanks. Right. So, uh, who else would like to? Yep. Go ahead. Oh, you were next. Yes, sorry. Uh, you know, my name is Jay Trickett. Um, I should say I'm on the board of zoning appeals, um, so I'm interested in in sort of uh, what, what's happening here, uh, in part because of my experiences on that board. Um, I also want to say. You know, regardless of what the town decides to do about zoning, um, you know, there are current zoning rules that I think are bad policy. Um, and regardless of how I feel about the policy going forward, you know, I will um, do my best to implement whatever's done. Um, my concern that came out of tonight, and it wasn't a concern I had before tonight, uh, is that the, uh, the, there was no presentation that and I, I'm going to use the word defend, and that, that might uh, sound a little funny, but that actually defends uh, what the town did in 2013 and 2016. And, and not to be defensive about it, but to provide the rationale. Because in all of my dealings in the town as a resident, uh, and I've served on a couple different uh, committees and in, in, in other ways with the town, uh, I have found the town staff, uh, the town board, uh, to be people who are well-intentioned uh, and acting in good faith. And so whether or not there's been a changeover in the town council, or if it is entirely just due to community feedback or whatever it is, you know, if, if the town council and the LPAC are now walking back you know, what they did a few years ago, um, that's fine and maybe that's appropriate. But I found it very striking that tonight no one even suggested the possibility that we, what we did in 2016 was a good idea. Uh, and and if, uh, the, if, the, if there had been a presentation of the reasons why the town did what it did in 2016, I think it would have enabled people here to provide actually better, more concrete feedback and understand what, uh, uh, what changing, what, what any of the proposed changes would do. Um, as a member of the Board of Zoning Appeals, but as someone who has read the comprehensive plan, but also the documents that, that uh, um, are on the town uh, website surrounding, uh, explaining the 2016 zoning changes, you know, there was a, a, one major reason for the changes is actually relates very much to what I do. Uh, and that is that you look at uh, RA and a huge proportion of the homes in RA are non-conforming. And it remain non-conforming, but at least, you know, far fewer are now than were uh, three years ago. And that has a real world impact on real people. And you know, it is occasionally heartbreaking actually as a member of the BZA to see people you know, 
people who have been in these homes for 40, 50 years, we're talking you know, small cottages, town nanny neighborhood, the flats, who you know, are living in these older homes that, that really are not up to code, you know, have a lot of issues, and they need to do something to really make it livable and, you know, and, and functional going forward. And because of the nonconformities with things like setbacks, you know, these homes are built right in the lot line, you know, they're tiny lots, um, they can't do it. And, uh, you know, we've had some people with, you know, sort of serious even medical issues that they needed to be able to address with, uh, you know, things like, uh, you know, ramps or, you know, things like that. That, they were, you know, so, they were so looking Jake, at a way to... Just as, I want you to finish yeah. your thought and then pause mm -hmm. so we can make sure that everybody's following. Sure. Pieces. Um, my understanding is, based on what the town has produced, um, that one of the main reasons for making the 26 changes was to help alleviate that issue. And when in our group, people didn't, uh, had no understanding of that. So that is not to say that we shouldn't make changes to the 2016 changes or to the 2013 changes or anything else. But if people don't understand why the town did what it did in 2016, they have no way to evaluate what is being proposed now. And I, for one, am skeptical you know, that, that the, any of the three proposals is an improvement. If, I, if anything, I'd probably be in favor of the, the, the neighborhood by neighborhood approach. Um, but based on my experience and other people on the BZA, I know that, that the 2016 changes actually, uh, actually helped a lot of people, uh, people who have been in homes in RA for, you know, in some cases, generations. So would somebody paraphrase, I know Jay had a lot uh, of good points there, and would somebody paraphrase? Can I, I'd be glad to. to. Uh, Make sure that we all are on the same page. Yeah, you no, know, Jay very eloquently discussed um, that, and, and that we didn't really have a good presentation of the reasons why um, the 2016 changes, um, what, what they were for, why the council, why LPAC um, made those recommendations at that time tonight as a context for our discussions um, and very clearly indicated that some of the accommodations that the changes made were helpful for rectifying nonconformities that would allow people to a little bit more flexibility and I essentially you get the essence of it? Yes. Okay. Can, can I ask you a question, Jay? Um, so in, in dealing with these nonconformities, do you, do you feel like the 2016 zoning was an effective tool to address those issues, or was it more of a sledgehammer to pound in a you know, small nail? I, I just wonder if, it was, if there could have been a more targeted approach. I think if anything has become clear to me serving on the BZA, it is that RA is not a neighborhood. It is a zone of neighborhoods. Town landing, you know, those people show up. You know, the flats, those people show up when something's going to affect them. Just, to, just for self-disclosure, I did say at the beginning, I live in town landing neighborhood. And, and they care about their neighborhood, and they have very different interests than, for example, the Sheldons do, who live in a different stretch of the same, of the same zone. And, and, in a, and it has a different neighborhood character to it. And so I can understand why... You know, for example, the Sheldons, you know, have, you know, sort of strong personal feelings about their neighborhood. Uh, but the fact, you know, simultaneously, you know, the, the density in Town Landing for 100 years has been tiny little lots, you know, right next to each other. So the idea that we are actually losing character through density, you know, it's more nuanced than that because, because RA is actually a very diverse area. Um, it, is that, is that, yeah, I think that was really helpful. Um, you know, one of, one, not to dig, digress too much, but one of the reasons why we wanted to address this specific potential change to RA was um, because we felt like it was something we could address fairly quickly. But in, in no way does the council, and I just speak for myself, but I think they would agree, feel like RA is a good zone the way it's currently structured. I think there's definitely a recognition that there are wildly different neighborhoods. I mean, I live in RA, and it's very different from where you live in RA. And we need to, we need to address that. Um, but the intention was to potentially just tweak this, right? And then move on to a more comprehensive process, not just for RA, but to address the comp plan holistically moving forward. 
great. Yeah, Hope? Uh, and you. we have had a, a lot of conversations about how this came about, and, and you're right, we didn't do a good job of bringing that to the table here. So I, I thank you for pointing that out, and it is, it, it's important that at each of these meetings, we don't assume that everyone has been listening to all the other meetings. For a lot of people, it's a lot of brand new information. And at those meetings, we, we have talked about how there are all these different pockets and that one fix isn't gonna work for all of them. And we, we've heard a lot about people being really worried that change is happening really fast. And that's why the RA seemed to be the one area where people were really concerned that their neighborhoods were getting chopped up very, very quickly. So we, we wanted to address that first, and that's why the focus today has been on RA, because we were worried that that, that was quickly being impacted, and we didn't want it to get carried away before we could make some sort of change. But we definitely are planning on doing a much deeper dive. Great. I, I don't want to, certainly don't, I just want to say one other thing, which is just that th there may have been more presentation at previous meetings. Uh, I'm grateful, actually, to the mailer I received. Uh, I'm in the BZA. I didn't know about this meeting until a few days ago. Uh, and I was unaware that uh, there was even a proposed amendment to the uh, zoning for RA until a few days ago. Um, I have spoken with a number of people over the past few days, um, and I just wanted to, I, I, probably the biggest reason I wanted to come tonight uh, is I did want to register actually that um, while I understand the, the, that the town has received a, a fair amount of feedback uh, on this issue, um, it is always the case that um, people who are adversely impacted one way or another um, are easy to organize. Um, but that there are a lot of people in this town too um, who want to be, who um, are not necessarily, uh, who don't share the, almost consensus it sounded like in this room. Um, and you know, when I asked, you know, are you going to the meeting? No, you know, I don't, they're not going to just change anything. Um, it'll never happen. So I don't need to come and register the fact that actually I like things the way that they are. Um, so I, I just wanted to register. I, I think, you know, it is, it is a, I am grateful for what you all are doing tonight, as flawed as it may be. Uh, I think it was done in good faith, and I appreciate it. Uh, I, 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 I think that, uh, you know, that is the ethos of this town, that, you know, this is a New England town. There are people where the, the town government really, you know, takes into account the feedback of the community. Uh, and really tries to operate almost on a consensual consensus basis. Um, that said, uh, I think it's you know it's hard to actually take the temperature of the town. Uh, I, I just want to be process. aware. I really am appreciating everything you're saying, and I'm aware of time, and want to make sure others have an opportunity. To get yeah, in. if the the point, the only point I'm making is because I think there's not another person in this room who's going to agree with me, uh, based on what I heard earlier. Um, I think that th you know this room is mostly filled with people who are upset, um, one way or another. Um, but uh, that does not mean that the town is upset, and I just want to register that uh, yeah. point and should be careful. Uh, and that that was the that was why I was concerned about the fact that it was not even uh, up okay. as part of the discussion to keep 2016. Okay. Yeah. So let's let's go over to Lisa. Could, could I just? Uh, uh, okay, so hold on a second. So. Um, I, I just want to, um, you indicated that you didn't know about the meeting, that, and, and that's certainly one of the things that's really frustrating for us and the council, and, and I agree with you completely. I've been guilty of that. I've lived in Falmouth my whole life. Until the bulldozer pulls up behind my house, I don't get engaged or involved, and most of us are that way. Um, how can we reach out to the community so that they know there's meetings and participate and do that? I mean, most of us live busy lives. We have careers. We have kids. We do that. Um, how do you do that? You got any, Jay, do you got any ideas? Anybody else sitting around here so, got some hold, ideas? What, yeah, let's, let's, yeah, let, Jay, can you have the, so do, do pass we, the mic? Yeah. Sorry about that. 
I was too quick with the answer. Uh, I'm Bill McKenna. So I think one suggestion, and I was asked it earlier, and I said email, but I'm not sure if that's good because we've had problems with that in the past with um, theft of that information. So um, just like with taxes, you're very good about sending them out by snail mail and making sure we get it, and we do, and we pay our taxes. So I think for especially for important changes like this that impact so many people, so many residents, knowing that, I know you know you knew there'd be significant impact that we should have gotten a mailing, and it would, yeah. I'd think that that would make sense in the future. Okay, I wanna, can we pass it to Lisa, because she's been patiently, well, maybe impatiently, I but patiently. yeah, I just, <clears throat> I corrected. Um, so I had three points, then but I- If anybody's and, finished, we can- I hope I can remember them. Um, Thanks, Jay. You know, it is hard to make um, broad brushed um, conclusions but I do feel that this, um, there are t a couple things I wanna say. One <clears throat> is that there was an incredible amount of information for, uh, that was very detailed. And I think one of the themes that you heard was how overwhelming it was. And <clears throat> many of us came here um, thinking we were going to uh, not be making micro decisions about the RA, but that we were gonna be talking about a much easier um, topic for the general public, which is the character of Falmouth, what we want to see, and um, our trust in what is happening. And um, so it, it was perplexing for a communications expert to <laughs> comprehend exactly, you know, what you are after, because we aren't going to be able to answer all those micro questions. And we weren't given the opportunity, really, to talk about what most of us were expecting to talk about here. And I also think that this type of, um, oh, so let me just say, the other thing I was expecting, and I, I mentioned it when I spoke to the council earlier, is that, you know, Valentine has put together some stuff, and I want to hear from the council or Teo or somebody, which is it? When is a cap not a cap? Is this a cap or isn't it a cap? Is his stuff factual or not? And it's very difficult to have, um, I mean, I'm an investigative reporter, I'm a communications professional, and I have to tell you that it is very difficult to decipher in Falmouth what is real from what is not. And I don't think you guys do a good job. I mean, it would have been very easy for there to have been a roundtable discussion where the opposition, if you want to call it such, or whatever you want to call it, it comes to say, hey, here's my facts, show me your facts, and then discuss this in front of people and let people decide, you know, which, where they stand. And that's what I was expecting. Um, and I, I get very discontented with the flip chart, um, you know, format. I think it's a, a good faith effort, kind of like schoolish. But this is a very passionate subject and people wanted to express their passion and that wasn't mm -hmm. allowed. And I'm not saying that letting everybody stand up and naysay is the answer, but I would have liked to have seen a roundtable discussion where Valentine's stuff comes and meets your so-called so expertise. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Lisa. So hold on, let's make sure. So would somebody paraphrase the points that Lisa made? I, I think I can. So Lisa, I think you started out by saying, you know, that there was a lot of information to take in and process and that that was difficult. Um, and that you had um, hoped that there would be discussion or oppor more opportunity to bring up um, sort of other areas of concern um, beyond the RA zone. And um, I think you also had um, concerns about the format that was chosen. Um, you know, you talked about um, uh, Valentine Sheldon's facts and that you know, you would like to have have some understanding of what facts are real, what are fiction, and and how do you do that? You know, do you do it across a table? I mean, I, you know, I, I I think that was your 
you would like to know what's what. Is that fair to say? I I just want to say, at one point, he was going to give a presentation. And, I mean, even, even that would have been helpful to other people who haven't been privy to this information that's been gathered. And I don't know whether it's true or not. But I, I mean, yes, it needs to be addressed. And I, and I mentioned this at the at the town council meeting that, you know, he he he's claiming that we were over our cap, and Teo says we're not. Well, we either are or we aren't. And and, and it, it's not an equivocating kind of. Uh, we the people need to know, um, and it, I think it's ob- obligatory for the town to provide correct information and to correct any false informations out there, and to allow someone to bring forward what they've. Um, what they have gathered and to let, you know, your experts challenge it. I mean, very specifically, it's very easy to do that. So can I respond? So public input, we want it. We want all kinds of folks to be able to give, you know, their input. And we realize that by, you know, allowing presentations um, if we're not going to be here till two in the morning um, or well that they can be very lengthy um, and also it doesn't give many people a chance to participate and that was hugely important to us because of all the feedback we had gotten about you know do you listen to us how can we participate so we developed um, you know, this format to allow anyone and everyone to talk and get something down on paper. And I totally appreciate the fact that that was, that was possible. Um, you know, as to the, you know, the fact war, um, I'm, I'm not sure I have a solution to that right now, but I think, I believe in large part, we accomplished LPAC and um, town council and staff accomplished what we set out to do this evening, and I assume there will be other meetings. I hope so. Okay. Yeah. Yep. Andrea, and then uh, over Marjorie. to Marjorie. Um, so thank you, Lisa. I too am very interested in being represented truthfully. Um, as a human being and as a council and as a town and and Valentine and anyone actually and um, as far as the presentations go it was too much we we didn't we actually didn't think we'd hear from enough voices if we took that format Um, for me like I think the town is now afraid to even like put stuff out there because there's been so much attack but for me it's our duty to put stuff out there um, real clear, real understandable uh, facts. And as a matter of fact, we talked about it either this morning or yesterday. It's all kind of blurring together about having another forum where we do we talk only that is. And to me, it's immediate. Like you know, we, I, everybody works so hard in this town, honestly. That and I one one guy said it tonight to kind of go back to Jay's fact too is. We're so close to it and we see so much information. It's on the website and we see it presented over and over and over and, you know, so we think it's been presented adequately. But then you hear people that tonight that have have never seen any of it. And, uh, you know, sorry? Jay didn't know about the amendment. He he works Right, he works works on the town committee. And the fact that, you know, it's not, there's not an easy answer. I'm very concerned about um, making a change so quickly if with the small lots that are going to be affected. But I'm also very concerned if we don't do something about the 50-foot lot with, for the bigger lots that are affected. So there's not an easy answer. But I just want to reiterate to you that that's on my mind and it's on Nathan's mind. It's a lot of, on a lot of counselors' minds to actually clarify what is happening in the school. And it's very different than what's being presented to the public, you know, from the residents. Um, but y- you can't always challenge what's been given either. You know, there's a level where this attack just needs to, you know, the best we can do is get the information from the school system and present it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, can I 
say something. Okay. Listen, yep. I, I'm, your I, last one, and then we'll move yeah, on to Marjorie. This, and then this, come over this characterization, again, of naysayers and attack is a little bit much. We, I, I don't know enough to make a judgment call, and there are plenty of people in this room that don't know anything. We're, we're the majority of people. At least Valentine has done some research. If it's wrong, it needs to be called out. If it's right, it needs to be addressed. But that doesn't mean attack, okay? It doesn't mean attack, and, it, and it's not naysaying to bring this forward. Yeah. Okay. I don't have a problem with right. anyone bringing so, it forward. So pause. Just let Andrea finish. I don't have a problem with anyone bringing it forward. I just think there needs to be a level of respect for what the town brings forward as well. Um, that's all I've, I'm saying as far as the attack goes. And, and honestly, I will say something about attack on a personal level as well as on many counselors feel this way. There's only so much you can take of that, and really it becomes destructive, not constructive. So I think from our perspective, it might sound like whining or, you know, too bad, don't be a counselor. Um, but we're doing this public service up here, and, and honestly, I, I'd like to be treated humanely. Honestly, I think we'd all like to be treated humanely, and we'd like to treat you that way, and we do the best to, to do that. And I think all of us are really interested in working together. So more of this is good for everyone I know sitting up there. Not less of it, more of it. So I just want to really be clear about that. We don't want to be, uh, we're not, there's no conspiracy going on. We're working our asses off way more than my regular job. <laughs> um, but I, I think we want um, cooperation and collaboration and also um, transparency. I think the town tries really hard to be transparent. It's obviously not working. So the more specific suggestions we get from you, like I want to hear the facts and let's do it publicly. And I love sending out a letter to everybody because I don't care how much it costs anymore, right? Valentine, it's like, who cares? I mean, we spend so much money on land, you know, buy whatever. Yeah. So. Okay, thank you. Let's, let's move to Marjorie. Um, I just wanted to say that it feels to me like the council isn't really thinking outside the box because you're beginning with the assumption that growth is inevitable. And that's not necessarily so. Thank and, you, Lisa. and there are a lot of examples of that, particularly in southern New England towns, where we're not talking about a moratorium, we're talking about really stopping it. So tonight I was disappointed that in the form that we're filling out, it's, we have you know column A, column B, and column C, and it's either back to 2016, it's keep what we have now, or what seems to me kind of a poor compromise in between the two. I find that uh, compromises on numbers like that just because they're somewhere in the middle of the two extremes are often not that helpful. So I'd like to see the discussion opened to um, all thoughts on zoning. You know, maybe some of us would like more restrictive zoning than what we had in 2016. Great. And just a quick paraphrase so I can make sure we got Marjorie. Anybody? Sure. Um, so what I heard is that you want us to be thinking more broadly than we are for solutions and not to be assuming that we need to grow, that that we need to, to evaluate all of the different options before we make any decisions. That's correct. Okay. Thank you, Marjorie. Okay, back over down here. Um, Can I use this? Yes. Can I use this? Yeah. <laughs> it it uh, doesn't have cooties or anything. Oh, no, no, no. I just wasn't sure whether I was allowed or whether this, these were just special <laughs> ones for yeah. the counselors. That's no, all. No. Okay. Uh, it, it's, okay. It, and it's about the... The sound the okay. Thing. I'm Bill McKenney. I just wanted to pass these out to the counselors. They're just copies of a, um, a subdivision plan on Carmichael Avenue. And I wanted to first thank the counselors in CPAC. Um, these are all volunteers who live in the town, and I think they give tirelessly to their efforts. And they're often not appreciated, and I'm sure um, there's not a lot of appreciation here being felt maybe tonight. But I do think people have thanked you for inviting us and, and uh, being willing to listen to us as, as the residents. Having said that, um, when you volunteer on CPAC or the board, I think you have a responsibility to the town. You take that on when you, when, when you are a board member and you need to have a broad shoulders and be able to take the type of comments that we're saying without taking it personally. These, we're just passionate um, uh, property owners, I think, and people that want the town to be 
um, some, where a place where they want to live. So um, they aren't personal attacks. I just think the board needs to have broad shoulders. I think when it comes to CPAC, if you're going to volunteer on CPAC, you bring something to the table. Um, I think CPAC um, has attorneys, engineers, people that are well versed in um, 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 land use policies and zoning. And I, I don't buy the um, fact that these are unintended consequences. I think this is because this was not well thought out. I think you headed down a path maybe with a certain amount of money and a certain amount of time, and then it appears as though you cut it short. And I don't know if that's the case, but that's just my perception of it. Um, so I wanted to show you on this site plan. So I live on Carmichael Avenue, and it's fully developed. Just once, I want to make sure they understand your first part, and then let's go to your second part. Could somebody just paraphrase what Bill's, Bill's sentiment right now? I think it's important. <laughs> so what I heard you say was that you think we should have broad shoulders and that it's not personal. Um, well, I have been personally attacked a lot, so I will say that. Um, and I didn't feel any of that tonight. It was actually felt really safe in here, and I really, really appreciated it. So it's not this level that I was talking about. Um, I, I think that, um, I'm sorry, I, I got really, I'm really tired, but um, I think that what you also said was that, um, I don't know what ZPAC, I don't know what you're referring to. LPAC. BZA? Oh, oh, LPAC. Oh, LPAC. LPAC. <laughs> okay. I was thinking comprehensive plan advisory. Yeah. Yeah. LPAC. So what I, I think the key thing I heard you say was that um, you don't think it was well thought out, that we headed down a path with a certain amount of money, and it really wasn't well thought out, the 2016 zoning, correct? Yeah. So she's um, got you. Okay. Yeah. So hold on. He's got um, more to say. In the so um, from a personal standpoint, um, I lived in um, the town landing neighborhood, the infamous town landing neighborhood for 20 years, and uh, that's where we raised our kids, and it was terrific because it's so close, it's on the ocean, and we grew up boating, and I can't think of a better place to have town landing, and my kids went to stepping stones, daycare. Um, it, they are amazingly uh, amazing memories for me and my family. But we then decided that we want a little more space. So my wife and I wanted a two-car garage and a bigger yard. And we didn't want to leave Town Landing, but we couldn't afford to buy a house next door and tear it down. So we bought a, um, a property that had that two-car garage, an older house with a bigger lot. That's on Carmichael Avenue. And that road is all fully developed. It was developed at the same time, similar houses. And there's one lot there that's left. And it was owned by Bud Rendell across the street from us. And he had his house, the lot next to it, and then he bought land in the back because he wanted a bigger backyard. And his plan was to subdivide it, but he ended up dying, but to subdivide the land and have one additional lot, which would have fully filled in the road. And now under the new zoning, there, the developer bought it, and um, it's a local developer, but still somebody who's motivated by, you know, just return, which I don't blame a developer, but it makes it tough in a neighborhood. It kind of pits neighbors. These folks have a house on the road, and it's made, created a lot of hard feelings. And this zoning has created hard feelings in, in neighborhoods. And now what's happening with these four lots, we have no recourse. So three of the neighbors are getting together, me being one of them, and I'm going to take this plan and try to negotiate with the developer and knowing that I have no, nothing to bargain with except for their goodwill because I don't have the backing of the town. And the town has said there's nothing they can do about this. So I'm hopeful that maybe they'll keep some of the mature trees and just have some buffers. And while I think there's really just room for one house because that's the density of the neighborhood, um, I, it's going to be four large houses in a, in a neighborhood that has small houses. And I think it's going to look, um, and there could be multifamily in there, there could be apartments, you know, based on the zoning, whatever that is. And the neighbor, the, uh, it's very tough for this neighborhood, uh, given what's happening. So I'm going to negotiate on good, on good faith. Hopefully, we'll get at least some buffers out of this and maybe not huge houses on these lots. But if there's a way that the town can help me with this, I'd appreciate it. And um, I'm asking for help from the town, the neighbors are, if there's some recourse against this. But the fact that they've created two lots in the back that have 50 feet of frontage, and this is what you're zoning, and this is what the, this is what the uh, LPAC, is it? LPAC. And the council approved, CPAC. fully CPAC, knowing that this is the zoning. You approve this. And it's a 
They've created 50 feet of frontage, and your zoning says the um, depth of that section has to be the front setback, which is now 10 feet. So they've created this sliver of land along the front, and then they have a six foot wide lot oh, that extends to the back, to this back area, and they've created two of them. And there's not enough room for a driveway in a six foot space, right? So what they've done for the two lots is put two six foot to, to the two six foot properties together, so there's enough room to put a driveway in for wide enough for one car. And if you think, and, and that's why I don't buy the concept that all of these folks who, while they're uh, volunteers, the taxpayers of Falmouth pay um, planning staff, and we also have funded experts to contribute towards these reports who do know about this. So amongst all of you, the fact that you are allow, you have allowed this to happen and I have no recourse against it is very upsetting to us in our neighborhood and it's tearing the neighborhood, you know, it's really yeah. impactful to the neighborhood emotionally. Yeah, I really hear this is painful. It's painful. And, and I would call, thank you, just one more thing. I would ask um, that um, between now and uh, this, when's your next meeting? Next Tuesday? At the ne what's the next council? Yeah. So at your next council meeting, I would ask you, with all due respect, that you immediately implement a moratorium, at least in the RA zone, for any no building permits um, until this is resolved. Okay. Thank you, Bill. All right, thank you, yeah. Bill. I have seen these flag, so-called flagpole lots and sort of contortions of frontage and setback, and um, it's, it's, I, we, we, as a neighbor, I mean, we, we appreciate that. That's very upsetting and very disruptive and unexpected. And I'll spend $300,000 renting <clears throat> my house, and this is what yeah. I'm Well, I, I know. Well, there was, there's, okay, fine. Said about it. This is my investment. This is my retirement. This is what I have. And I've lived in Falmouth my whole life. And this is what the town has done. All of you collectively have, have consciously made this happen. It isn't allowing it to happen inadvertently. It's a conscious effort on all your parts to approve this and initiate this. Thank you, Bill. I do hear you. Yep, hope you wanted to respond. We only have like six minutes sure. left. Sure, so I just, I on. wanted to respond because we heard a lot this evening. Why are you talking about RA? Why are you rushing on things? And this is, this is why we're talking about RA. And this is why we're trying to escalate a decision. And we're not ignoring the other parts of town. And we plan on looking at all of everything that we can. But because of your story is not alone and, and, I hope that the other people who aren't here now realize that, that that's why we're doing RA this evening. And just Thank one you. more thing, they have bulldozers now, and they're now starting to demolish this one house that is part of the character. It is exemplary of the whole character of the neighborhood. They're now, there's a bulldozer there. They've started knocking it down. Tomorrow, you know, it'll continue. And I'm asking for the board, I can't, there's nothing you can do. You've granted the building permit on this, but I so respectfully request that you implement a moratorium on any building permits at your next council meeting. We can't do anything about it. They have building permits on all four of those? No, they just have a building permit on this one. There's no, there's no, no other building permits in this. I checked with the okay. code officer, so. So, so we can't, so. You can't do anything about this one. I'm just saying about okay. these other three. So that's my alarm saying there are five minutes left and we have a hard stop at 1030 and I think both of you are. Okay. Oh, no. Yeah, hey, hey on, on the other. Oh, okay. On the other hand, uh, I appreciate how much so, you're doing. So hold on a second. Um, what's being asked is, is there, is there anything you can do for Bill? Like, uh, is there any commitment about what would be a next step? Okay, hold on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So is yeah well so, yep go ahead so i don't know from a you know a planning board or whatever perspective but um something we've been talking about i mean which we mentioned at last council meeting you know if we if we have something we can introduce as an amendment you know as a as a zoning amendment that it is possible to make it 
that zoning amendment retroactive to the date of introduction so that the sooner we have something to introduce, if there is support, and there may not be, um, you know, total council support for this, I mean, but that it can be, you know, that is an aspect of that amendment. Do you know what I mean? That it could be retroactive to the date, date of amendment. No, actually, oh, actually, that's, right. I think so that's, so can pa I, pa can pause I? Pause a second. Can, what? Can I'll, I? I'll talk to him afterwards. Okay. It's just technical. Okay. Uh, so. Okay, yeah, right. we can so move I, on. We but, only have a couple. Yeah, yeah. okay. So, hey, uh, wait, Valentine was in the queue first. Right, but, do you mind? Go ahead. Okay, Go hey, ahead. thanks. It's difficult. Obviously, very emotional. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You're earning your pay today. Uh, <laughs> sorry about that. Anyway. Uh, I've been there, done that. Okay. Uh, because it's so emotional and everything like that, and you're hearing from the squeaky wheel, which is normal in politics, uh, yeah, I just want you to look at it from a technical standpoint. I'll talk to you about it because I'm pretty good at this stuff. But anyway, the uh, what you're doing has to be looking forward, okay? So a, a moratorium or something like that has to be forward-looking, obviously, because... You know, you have people who are dividing lots that have been approved already that you'd make worthless. So, okay, so grandfather in. Uh, Jay had an interesting perspective, and uh, may I humbly suggest I'm a middle child, so I've been told I compromise, find compromises, uh, is just, you know, for everything before a certain date, you keep this zoning and everything going forward, you get the new zoning, okay? And that way you basically fix Jay's problem, you fix the grandfather problem, but you actually look forward to preventing things like that happening again. And, you know, Jay had an interesting point about RA being all over the place as far as zoning and, you know, the houses five feet from the road and 10 feet from the road, and then you have big mansions and everything like that. You know, you're, you're, you know, take your time. If you can do a moratorium on build, uh, allowing lot splits and everything else like that, that's a big thing. Building permits are a lot more technical. I'll talk to him specifically about his problem. But I appreciate what you're doing, and I understand. Been there, done that. And, you know, you're getting more than you're getting paid for it, okay? <laughs> okay so I've done development yeah. work, large scale, from Maine to Florida for 27 years, and I am well-versed in this, in zoning. And I have worked with zoning attorneys for years, and I've had the benefit of learning from them because we worked as a team to execute on um, controversial projects despite opposition. So that was my job. And I'm letting you know that the only way that someone has been successful in towns in stopping this in its tracks while they rethink as a moratorium. The last time it happened to me in Londonderry, New Hampshire, I was trying to get a project approved. I had been to, this was around 9-11, I'd been to 14 planning board meetings. I'd get home at two o'clock, you know, after um, 14 months, so 14 planning board meetings. And then um, they didn't think that they really had means based on our legal help to push back. They uh, immediately implemented a moratorium, and we were dead in our tracks. There's nothing we could do, um, and I'm asking you to to implement a moratorium so, on building permits. So I'm I'm hearing silence when he says that. So I I know right now in this moment you can't commit to do that, but can you commit to have a conversation about we, we it? We appreciate the feedback. Yeah. We'll okay. Talk about so it. they're committing to have a conversation about it. Okay. So, and so, just because it's 10:30. I just want to say the people who are here will hear from and then we'll adjourn. Okay? So Can just so we ever get just one, one second because Caleb and yeah. Well, well Caleb question. was trying to get in too. So, so uh, Thank my you. question is the, the people that have gone through the process and created lots who have deeds. Hello? Yeah. That have deeds, deeds already. How do you want to Put deal it with them? Yeah. How are you going to deal with them? You have a deed, you have a buildable lot. It may not be a small lot, but it's a deeded lot, and it may not be going through a neighborhood. It may be going through your own private property. How is the town going to deal with that? No? 25,000 okay, so, square feet. Okay, so... With so 100 I, feet of frontage. 
Yeah, I, I, I think that's personally something I've been struggling with a lot, is how do we protect people who have made investments based on the <clears> rules <throat> that we've made, whether I don't agree with the rules personally, I, I don't like them, I voted for them, we can talk about why that is, but I disagree with them now, but they were the rules when those people made those investments. So we just need to be very careful and thoughtful. This, this is awful, I don't like this, but we made a rule and they're following the rules. So I think we need to think very carefully as a council and as a community how we address this um, because there's a lot of ramifications on both sides of the issue. Yeah. But it's going through a different type of road than some of these other laws. Sure, sure. there's nuances there, yeah. I, I understand. Yeah. So Caleb was wanting to get in before. I was just going to ask that we address the concerns yeah. of those left in at yes. Valentine, yeah. George, and yeah. Adam, okay. and Tommy. Okay. Yeah. Well, you, you can't, although Valentine's been waiting. Can I say yeah, one more thing? thing and that, yep. I just to add on, yep. you know, I don't know if you heard him or not, but basic, but what Aaron was saying, I also feel is like, how do we protect you and the gentleman that just left the circle? I, I'm not asking you, I'm just saying that's the big Absolutely. challenge right now for council. Yeah. I understand his complaint. Right, but we can't say, you know, let's protect Adam and Bill. We have to actually look at the whole zone and figure out a solution. Uh -huh. And it's, it's really tough right now yeah. um, it's, it's, to let you go ahead because you followed the laws and maybe you did it respectfully or whatever. I don't know. Yeah. I, I understand, but we don't have an answer for you tonight, you know, but we are going to talk about, yeah, we are going to talk yeah. about that. That's part, that's important to that's us. That's a good point, Adam. Yeah. Okay. Valentine and then. You too. Hey, uh, so I wanted to go back to the BZA question and the whole comp plan, um, or, or the reason. Uh, no. Can people hear? No. Yeah, yeah, okay. that's better. Right. All right. Yeah. So yeah, I just wanted to go back to the BZA question Jim was bringing up, um, and as it being like the main focus for the 2016 rezoning, which is my understand. No, no. Yeah. Okay. Right, because I'm right about that, right? That, that, that was one of the main reasons. It was a component, sir. It was a component. Right, right. Okay, please don't, right, right. You can do that later. Um, my understanding is that it was a driving force in the rezoning. And my guess, and I don't know whether this is true or not, but um, feeling is, is that it's not a great reason to do a rezoning. I don't know of any town that's ever done it. Um, you don't change the rezoning because the BZA is overwhelmed. Maybe the BZA has to meet more often. Maybe there are two of them. Um, I completely understand the... Go ahead, Claudia. Sorry. No, finish, no, finish, finish, finish. Okay. So <laughs> I completely understand that, there are, that RA is a massively... Um, there's a massive range of lot sizes there. There are communities and neighborhoods that have been built up over time or a 300-year-old town. And there is a way to deal with that. And I think the, the, it was mentioned in, in LPAC's presentation, Becca, you know, the multi-zone. And I think that's where the town needs to get to okay. if they really want to fix RA and alleviate these BZA, mm -hmm. the overburden BZA problems and I think I think the town council recognizes that and I think the problem is is that to get there takes a fair amount of time because as Teo has said at these LPAC meetings other people have said well, well where do you draw the line mm -hmm. you know it when you look when you do look at the maps because I've made a whole bunch of maps that I presented at, to LPAC um, the neighborhoods are pretty it's pretty clear and I think you're never going to get it a hundred percent you just aren't there's just no way mm -hmm. but I think you can get it a lot closer than using one giant brush, which is, which is how it, what happened. And that broad brush basically brought the zoning down to the lowest common denominator, and that's the problem. And so I just, want to, I, I just wanted to address that, and I don't want to take up a, up a lot of time because it's getting so late. So let me make sure yeah. that they understand the first part of what you said, because, Caleb, you had a bit of a... I understand that. It was correct. Well, I mean, yes. It was Wait, right, right? I was right. Uh, no. I can I can I attempt right, to so restate okay. what? Yeah, we're all getting to yes. Valentine, yes. <laughs> okay. Okay. So Valentine, and and it's really about. Uh, I mean, I. 
I think what you're talking about is what was the rationale, what was the thinking behind the comp plan, and if it's good to know that, I mean, we need a way to share it and present it because it actually, I mean, I, I was involved. Um, we did a lot of thinking. We, um, excuse me? It, it, it's a big problem. That you the, the understanding, right. And, um, but anyways, I, I'd like to respond to that after I rephrase what you're saying. But um, I think you're saying that, you know, the RA district we know is 300 years old. It has been developed over years, is very varied, and you feel that, um, you know, a neighborhood or somehow, um, you know, a uh, subzone, something like that may be ultimately it's uh, the, the best, and there will never be a perfect solution, I can tell you all right now, um, but that that will take time, and yeah, so what do we do in the meantime? So can I respond to him just for a moment? Um, so, so I think it's, it's helpful, I can give you a little bit of, a little bit of um, the thinking, you know, that went into, to the, the zoning that we came up with. First of all, um, it, the yes, there was a knowledge that an enormous or a significant majority of the lots in RA were non-conforming pre-2016. That is not, um, it's not even so much about load on staff, but it's about um, uh, residents being able to, um, you know, make adjustments, additions, renovations on their property without having to go to BZA. So some of it was customer friendly. The other thing we did was try to look at um, the character and what were considered traditional, acceptable neighborhoods in the RA district. And we did, you know, get, I remember I was on CDC, we got one set of recommendations from LPAC and we said, you know what, the lots are too small. 5,000. And we, we, yep. we doubled them. Um, and so I don't want to go back farther with, you know, describing the thinking in the plan, but I just wanted to kind of flesh out that little section of All right. thinking, because right. there was thinking. Thank you, Claudia. <laughs> and, you know, I'm aware of the time, and everybody's tired, so let's yeah, get you okay. To, one, one. Yeah, can I just, so I just wanted to follow up with that. I'm sorry. It's, it's getting late. But first, my understanding is... It's not getting there. It is there. It is there. there it is yes. Okay, so, so, here, so here, here's my thing. All right, so if, the, if one of the driving forces of redoing doing this 2016 rezoning, if the... I mean, we can... I'm right, right? It's, it, a lot of it was this non-conforming lots, Okay. So, no, okay, sorry, Andrew. So, if that is the logic, if we were all going after the fix for the non-conforming, then what is the logic of doing a half step that will, we already have to deal with the non-conforming that's been created now if we go to the half step, okay? So we get that, that's a big one that all needs to be figured out so that we make most people happy with that decision. If you go to this middle step of this RA, this new compromise, knowing that we have to change it again, because we don't know if that's RA 1, 2, 3, 4, or 5. Is it the middle one, the big one, the small one? We, we don't know, yeah. and we haven't done the studies for it. So my, my thing is like, well, if you're gonna do the middle step and then you know you might change it, you're gonna have more nonconformity, so you're actually doing exactly what you were trying to fix in the first place. I, I, I think you make some excellent points, Valentine, and, and I don't disagree with you. I think the, the issue is more that the task of zoning multiple neighborhoods in RA is sort of monumental, right? I, I don't think you'd disagree with that. Um, but we have, on the other side, a very acute issue that a number of people, Bill, has talked about. Right. One solution could be potentially a moratorium, and then we would address the multiple zoning in a more comprehensive way. Um, another alternative, which I think is potentially more respectful of some of the folks who've made investments, is the path that we've headed down now with this ch minute change in RA and then multi-zoning later. So it is something we're struggling with and we're trying to, we're trying to figure out what's best for everybody. But, but I think all of your points are completely valid and completely understood. Yeah. Can I just say one 
Great. No, no, we need to move on. No, we need to move on. George. Uh, there's been a lot of criticism of the process here tonight, and my observation is I think it's been very good communication. There has been a balance between sharing opinions and venting, and I think the venting that has been done has been very respectful. I came here for the one about Falmouth Center, and it was the line everybody up at the mic, and it was not controlled. It was chaos. This was very well planned and very well conducted, and I congratulate all of you, and thank you, Susan, for facilitating it. So let me say that. I think this format has been an addition to the earlier format. I think both of them have been good. This is the, you know, the in-depth analysis and discussion and debate, but the other part was good, too, because everybody got a chance to participate. So let me just say my addition to this discussion is that I think a couple of things are being missed here. First is... The 2013 and the 2016, the, 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 the comprehensive plan and the zoning amendments were not this sea change, all of a sudden bring in. This has been going on for 30 years. I was part of it for 25 years. I was involved in three comprehensive plan in, in, uh, iterations and the implementation, and it's always been moving in this direction. So this is the culmination of not just the last three years, it's a culmination of the last 30 years. So that's the first thing I think people need to understand, that there's a long planning process here, and it hasn't just been all of a sudden we're gonna jump all these developments. And that relates to the other final aspect that I'll bring into it, is that there's some real gaps in understanding here about what is legal and what are legal requirements. What are legal requirements for growth limits and this zoning is part of a program that supports Falmouth's uh, rate of growth ordinance. And if you pull the comprehensive plan and the growth area, rural area, and the, and the uh, redirecting density from the rural areas to the growth areas, you pull that out and you pull out your foundation for the legal defensibility of the uh, rate of growth ordinance. So just understand there are unintended consequences in both directions. And moratoria have their own legal requirements and you have to respect the property rights as well of both the people that are getting impacted in the neighborhoods and the people that own property. And, and again, compare Bill's little scenario of four lots with my scenario where I just went in and put it in an apartment in the, in the existing basement. You drive by my house now, you wouldn't know any difference that, that it's there from what it was before. And I couldn't have done that without the... Uh, 2016 zoning amendments, and I wouldn't have a chance to be here tonight sharing if it, if it hadn't. So I support it. I absolutely agree with the calibration that you're doing and looking at the big picture, but don't forget about what the real big picture is, which is 30 years of planning that got us here. Great. Thanks, George. All right. Yeah, well, George stole most of my thunder, so thank right. you for that. And we'll, get get us, we'll get us out of here word. quicker. You get the last word. Uh, all I really wanted to say was I, I thought the forum was great, the fact that we were able to have everyone have a voice. Uh, the town council listened to us. Um, uh, just a show of hands, who's ever served on town council before in this room? I know two. Yeah, I know you guys. <laughs> yeah, we have. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> who, who of this group was serving seven years ago? No one. I know that. So this is fluid, and if you want to make a change, it's great that we showed up tonight. It's great that we all heard our voices, but if you want to make a change, this is a start. But I think if you want to get out there, put your hat in the ring. Yeah. Yep. Put your hat in the ring. That's it. Please. Mm, thank you. Uh, I just want to thank all of you for um, hanging in there. This, you know, I wish I had an IV of coffee for all of you so you could make it home safely, but I really feel honored... Um, to be part of this and really, really, really appreciate, have gratitude for your engagement and respect for each other. So thank you very, very much. Thanks all. Thank you. Journey well. <laughs>